What is going on, everybody? It is episode 374 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett. I'm here with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hello, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. Today, we're talking about DeSantis. Yes, let's go. That's this what I want to talk story. about. DeSantis yeah. announced. Everyone has opinions about it. Everyone's really excited about it. Psych. We're fired up. We feel our civic duties. They're very important. Who's, who's DeSantis? Um... Oh, well, this is awkward. Yeah, I um. <laughs> okay, we've got Phil with us today. Hi, everybody. I'm Phil Labonte. I'm the lead singer of All That Remains. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have a good time. <laughs> well, not talking about Ron DeSantis. I don't want to talk Ron about DeSantis. I, I talked about DeSantis last night, and yeah. it was just, I mean, look, Ron DeSantis is kind of boring. There's, there's an appeal to that for, you know, some people. Um, that's it. Yeah, like his, I his, want political theater. I'm obsessed with it. There you go. I mean, that's a legitimate thing. Because I mean, people. I was listening to Ben Shapiro today, and he's talking about like, oh, if you want, you know, the political theater, and people don't want that. Blah blah. blah. I'm like, you are crazy, Ben Shapiro. And people yeah. absolutely want the political True. theater. theater. So. Uh, it also runs headlong against their business model to say that they don't want political theater because they, oh, yeah. you know, that's how a lot of it. Yeah. There are. It would be like me saying I don't want celebrities to say stupid stuff. I I <laughs> do. Like, I may get annoyed with it, but I still want them to say the stupid stuff because it gives Absolutely. me ta something to talk about. So we got a bunch of stuff to talk about today, ladies and gentlemen. But before we get into that, remember, would you please like this video and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Turn the notification bell on. I always forget to mention that one. I've also been getting a couple of messages here and there again that people saying that they were magically unsubscribed. I don't know what that is about. If mm -hmm. that's YouTube playing shenanigans it's or if it's just... If it's China because they're mad at our take about the Little Mermaid, we apologized. I apologized yesterday, so don't don't blame We're me. China. Sorry, Xi Jinping. Dude, I'm not sorry. Stop unbanning us. Forgive stop unbanning us. us. Um, also, guys, remember if you would like to super chat anything twenty dollars and over, we will interrupt the discussion and we will read that super chat right then and there on the air. If you want to tell us how much you love or hate Ron DeSantis, even though it has nothing to do with pop culture. We will interrupt the discussion. <laughs> we will read it right then and there. Or if you want to compliment me about my hair yesterday, you can do that as well. So we will talk about all that, and then we're going to get into a bunch of other things. So we're going to talk about Mr. Beast, who was arrested. Uh, in the uh, People in the audio version of this right now are like, what is he doing? He arrested, was arrested uh, 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 for a prank that he played a year ago uh, on another YouTuber. So we're going to talk about that. I've got some some bones to pick with them about their use of public resources and what these <laughs> cops are doing in society. <laughs> so true. Seriously, I was like, well, what are Especially they doing? in New York yeah. City. Yeah, so, so we'll talk about that. Uh, <laughs> we're going to talk about... Okay. Um, there's this article that's written about Lily Rose Depp. It's usually Mary that gets so fired up about this stuff, but it's, it's about Lily Rose Depp and the idol, and it runs headlong into this other article in which Priyanka Chopra whines about a, something a director did, and it just proves the revolving door of personal uh, objectification leading into the degradation of society where then it will come full circle around and they will complain about it and it really pisses me off. It's a off. really interesting so, conversation to be had about women's agency. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, we'll get into that. Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's not just them. It's, it's, it's the Hollywood, it's the industry in general. You guys are talking dating before the show. I just want to talk about how Hollywood's full of a bunch of psychopathic hypocrites. So we're so going to talk true. about that. So we're also going to talk about the Rings of Power, which was so bad they had to have a they had to have a therapist on set to help all the whiny babies deal with the fact that people on the internet called them names. Well, oh like nobody skate phones at the door yes nobody's <laughs> nobody has hired me a therapist because people say mean things to me on the internet so people earlier were saying uh mary is the star of the show do you think brett has developed a complex i demand that i get a therapist to deal with my feelings Who said of, that? Uh, in, the, in chat, the chat in the chat so i demand that oh people <laughs> that people get me a pay for my, me to have a therapist so that I can deal with my feelings about this. Mary. <laughs> Brett, when a segment starts, all right. Yes, exactly. That's exactly <laughs> what it is. All right. Uh, and we're also going to talk about Wanda Sykes, who hasn't been relevant since the Bush administration, but she has got thoughts on cancel culture. She says it's not real. She says it's just consequences. And we've heard that a million times before. 
and says that it's really just white people being mad that they can't just say whatever they want and get <laughs> oh away with Oh my it God. Yes. Someone said that they want Blonde Brett back. Uh, well, that's How gonna... about episode 400? No, no, you can have Blonde Brett back right now, but it's going to cost you 25 Super Chat, 25 Crisis Parties. 25 Crisis Parties, that's, guys. I'm, I'm upping the number. It's yes. official. Yep. You, but you want... still, no wagers for me. You just like torturing Brett. Yes, that's that What's seems to be. That seems... What about if you had to dye your hair black? Not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I've invested too many thousands of dollars into this. <laughs> Fair enough. Blonde. Fair yeah, enough. literally, Fair not even exaggerating. I have seen photos of Mary with dark hair, though. Her a picture been there, of her done that. High school Mary in a picture with Blair White. It's mm -hmm. a vibe. It, it was something. I don't know if it was a vibe. <laughs> so we're gonna get into that. We got a bunch of other stuff. So if you guys are ready, we'll get right into it. Mary, are you ready? Yeah. Phil, are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's go. Uh, somebody clip. Uh, could somebody clip that? Yes, I want to add it for a crisis party next week. So if you could, do I that, have guys. many more of them. I can do that at, at any time you need. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll do that. So we're, we're going to get a bunch of them. I need people to clip them for me. So let's get into this first. First things first, guys. A new trailer for Barbie is out, and it's freaking awesome. You should go oh, watch so it. so you've changed your tune. No, I still want to see Oppenheimer first, all but right, I am going to go right. see Barbie. It is literally Barbie runs headlong into the Matrix, and instead of a red pill or a blue pill, it's a Birkenstock or a high heel, I, right? I, I, those I, are called? Yeah, yeah Birkenstocks, yeah. the uh, yeah. official shoe brand for lesbians. Is that what it is? <laughs> and Ren Fairs? Is it Ren Fair attire? I feel like it's Ren Fair attire with a name like Birkenstock. I don't know. Or no, it's German. I don't think so. Or is it is, it, is Birkenstock German? I, I don't know. I have no idea. Um, but yes, there, there's a new Barbie trailer. Yes, there's feet. No, uh, what's his name didn't direct it. This was not directed by. Is um, that a, who who was the? She she was holding the Birkenstock yeah. and the and the high heel. Who was that? Uh, the actress, I don't know who that was. I don't even know who the character was. No, neither do I. But, uh, but it the was red pill, blue pill. Yeah, it's it's red pill, blue pill, but it's high heel or just a, a plain flat foot. And they're obviously scared of flat feet because they then scream at the concept of your feet even touching the ground. So just uh, just worth going and checking out, guys, because the battle between Oppenheimer and Barbie is once again heating up, as we as we talked about before. We discussed it yesterday. I wish that the yep. Warner Brothers like Banhammer wouldn't slam down on us if we reacted to the I know, trailer. Right? Yeah, <laughs> Warner, Warner Brothers is not good about that. Also, a quick heads up, guys. If you guys like the Hallmark Channel uh, but found it to just be a little bit too not conservative these days, uh, Great American Family, which we've talked about several times on here, just bought Pure Flix. So they're going to be making more family-friendly and faith-based content. I can already see myself yawning and falling asleep, I'm Pure afraid. Pure Flix but, just is a little too on the nose. Uh, that, with the name, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, does it have to it be might as purity well be called, focus? It might as well be called God Flix. That would be... I, is it only going to be Christian content? Uh, yeah, so, uh, well, uh, yeah, in, in family-friendly entertainment, which I'm sure means it's going to have the lens of... of it means drag shows, right? Yes, lots of drag shows. Drag Flix was probably already taken. <laughs> so, yeah, it's... Do you see uh, the... the the, like anti-Catholic nun troop. Yeah, the, they're fake nuns. The, obviously. the sisters like of uh, perpetual indulgence. It's disgusting. That's, that is that is what they are. Yes, it is disgusting. It is an antagonization uh, antagonization of people on the right uh, and of Catholics who have never been the 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 like ruling class in the country. Like they've never. Yeah. It's always been Protestants. Puritanism and Protestants. Yeah. So I mean, Anglo-Saxon kind of goes with. What uh, but to be fair to your to your average lefty, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it makes it's no all, difference yeah, to them. They it's no... Christian. They're Christians. There doesn't matter. Well, I so. mean, it's it really is what James Lindsay said, right? All of this is born out of the fear of the dad and the mom who shun their child for being for being gay. Like that's where a lot of this comes from. It's the in the and the and the, the, the child abuse right. stuff uh, from the Okay, so that's that's the justification. No, that's what I'm saying. It's uh, it's it's the excuse that's used. Yes, for okay. Yes. They're they're punching up. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the excuse. Really what it is is they're trying to corrupt people because uh unhappy people are revolutionaries. It's like they they happy found their not revolutionaries. They found their in. And yeah. they and they yeah, ju they just, just they exploit it very very well. So uh, if you guys want to check that channel out, I am excited to see Sound of Freedom when it comes out. So uh, the mo that's not connected to this, but it's kind of in the same vein. James uh, uh, Jim Caviezel is very religious, and that mm. movie is. Uh, is his so I'm excited for that also guys James Cameron is working on a new Terminator movie I saw this just before we went live uh, whatever he does uh, it better be it better have exactly the same CGI budget as Avatar or I don't want to see it why right? would it though I know right why, why the hell would it it, it, it wouldn't but uh, yeah he's they're all he, gonna be blue he's working on the he's working about, on the script right now how about 
Terminator meets Avatar. He Ooh. does like a connected universe. It's a horrible idea. I know, right? It's great. <laughs> Let's go. But he has the ego for it. He, he does. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, And to be fair, he's earned that ego because all his movies seem to make insane amounts of money. So who are we to judge for, for I that? I want to see the, the Terminator fight one of the humans in the giant robot. Yes, things. I completely like now. I, I don't know how many people actually think of those characters when they think of Avatar. They probably just think of the Navi. Yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Like, and what a letdown it is! Like you expect Terminator versus Navi, and you just get Terminator versus mean humans with with tech. They're just it, mean could be, for no reason. Could just be sci just be a science, a, just a boring science fiction movie rather than an actual crossover. Everything from Hollywood is just a letdown. These it days, is. it does seem that way. Uh, mm. All right. I do want to talk, guys, about The Little Mermaid. And uh, the budget for The Little Mermaid is out. All the information, because we're going to see The Little Mermaid tonight. God help us all. <laughs> Sorry if that's blasphemous. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, a budget of $250 million, which means with marketing, you're looking at around $375 million. I would actually posit that it's quite a bit higher than this because there was COVID shutdowns, which means that... I would pro they're, they're not saying this and they're not saying whether the 250 million dollar budget is the result of the covid shutdowns or if it's yeah. what it was beforehand but something tells me that it's probably more than that so let's just round it out to 400 million 400 million so <laughs> Look, they're they're port they're saying that it's going to make about a hundred million for the three day weekend, a hundred and twenty million for the four day weekend, but that's not the real problem. The real problem is it's only going to make like sixty million dollars overseas, so it's coming in at less than two hundred million in its opening weekend. Fast Ten just opened to like three hundred something million in its opening weekend and only made sixty million dollars here. Mm -hmm. So it made all of its money overseas. Nobody's going to see this. And it's got to make at least $800 million to profit. At least $800 million. I, so It'll be interesting to see. Um, and the other thing is here, look, the, if we're talking about comparisons to other Disney live actions, The Lion King opened to $191 million. Aladdin opened to $91 million. Uh, Dumbo was the biggest flop of them all, only opened like 45 million. I still don't know anyone that actually went and saw Dumbo. Uh, Beauty and the Beast opened to 174 million. And what was the other? Jungle Book opened to like 103 or 104 million. And those were all when 100 million meant a hell of a lot more than what it means right now because of inflation. I also wanted to mention that Halle Bailey just did a new cover story for Glamour where she again talked about race. They uh, said that Bailey talked more about how happy she is to be able to inspire young black girls by starring in the movie. Quote, when I saw those videos for the first time, I just cried. I was sobbing uncontrollably. The fact that I'm these babies are looking <laughs> the fact that these babies are looking at me and feeling the emotions that they're feeling is a really humbling, beautiful thing. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm calling one of two things. It's either entirely cap. Or it's narcissism, and it's because they're looking at you, not because not because of what this means for a greater a greater piece of the culture. I, I don't believe that whatsoever. Um, <laughs> so, so if this film makes only 120 million dollars in its opening weekend, it has to do one of two things. It has to either have really really long legs and have very small drop offs week to week, which is not usually the case in these in, in these instances or it has to have a better international box office which it doesn't look like it's doing we we had the whole discussion about whether china was coming out for this i think there was like very very minimal in the way of pre-sale tickets for i mean the chinese were box these office. classic disney stories relevant to kids in china at the time no i doubt it no. so the nostalgia factor yeah. doesn't help the other thing is like, look, Top Gun Maverick last year opened to 160 million over Memorial Day weekend. And I would rather go, I wish they just opened that one again and just put that back in the theaters <laughs> this weekend. I would have gone and seen that. Pirates of the Caribbean, the last Pirates of the Caribbean one opened like 140 million. And that was several years ago. And then uh, Indiana Jones, which is another Disney product, uh, the C Kingdom of Crystal Skull <laughs> back in 2008 opened to like 130 million and then Aladdin opened to 116 million and that was like a long time ago like in monetary terms with inflation that's a lifetime ago what was that 2019 2019 that's a that's a lifetime ago as far as inflation goes in this country right now um it just it's just not going to make the money back and if it doesn't they'll be uh they'll be like it's racism it's sexism 
and also people are afraid of getting COVID if they go to the movie theater. Yeah, it's also, it's yeah, we're living in a post-pandemic world that's not really a post-pandemic. They literally declared the end of the pandemic like a couple weeks ago, so they can't even say that anymore. Uh, also, the other thing is like the what these news sites do because they're scumbags is they, they run cover. They're like, oh, it's going to open to a big $120 million opening. I'm like, no, it's not because that's not a big number because you're lying because then they, they add like four paragraphs down. Oh, by the way, all these other Disney movies made more at a time when money uh you know when when the dollar had when the more dollar value. had more value right true, so true. so they were they were legitimately just selling more tickets at that time but because these sites are run by companies that are owned by large conglomerates like <laughs> disney someone commented snow black will flop next year as well yes. <laughs> <laughs> damn rachel zegler is not even black but nope. i mean relevant i feel like i feel like hammerhead shark is the way to go it's yeah. the insult to go because of the eyes <sighs> oh I think that that's like pretty. I I like that about her face, but a lot of people have been. Uh, I mean, I, I find her to be very attractive. Memes about I find her to be very attractive, but when she says stuff where she lies about like crying because kids see her on screen, I was it's, sobbing uncontrollably. I'm out also, of my eyes that I'm, are very far apart. I'm also. It's like, and I, and I reached from my left eye to my right eye, and it took forever to get there, and it was just like, uh, like okay, that's that's mean. But like, look, Sorry. I'm also I'm also picturing where I'm they not. like where they set them up, where they're like here's a bunch of kids watching your movie and they like make her sit there and watch them. Like they're like, with, she's with like, her eyes clamped open. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they like, they, they just stick her in front of a bunch of kids watching her movie. They're and like, cry, and, cry. <laughs> and the kids are all just like, like, why am I here? What the hell is going on? I don't get it. Yeah. Like it's just, it is what it is, man. I just, uh, oh, also X-Men The Last Stand opened to like $122 million. That came out so long. When was that? I don't. I'd have to lay. It's not recently. Not not recently. So. I wonder what gas cost back then. Yeah. What? Yeah. What was the What was the price of gas? It had to be the early twenties. Uh, so, uh, yeah, guys, just uh, just be a heads up for all of the articles that are coming out where people are saying that like you gotta gotta. Two thousand six. See, a very long time ago. So, uh, guys, there's just a. Uh, be wary of the articles that say like, oh, look, it's going to open. I think one of my favorite was like, it said, it's going to have a swim. It, like the open looks swim. Like it's going to happen swimmingly. <laughs> and I'm like, they were just looking for words that had to do with water. <laughs> and it's just like, come on, man. All right. People are going to flow into the theater. Yeah, that's, that's basically what it is. It says, yeah, this one says box office. The Little Mermaid swimming to 120 million plus opening weekend. So it sucks. <laughs> uh, oh, also, by the way, the Rotten Tomatoes score is sitting at a, a 72 from the critics and an 84 from the, the audience. And I'm calling a, just, just a tiny bit of cap on that one because it said with fewer than 50 ratings and it's been saying that for like nine hours mm. and far more people I'm sure have written reviews I can refresh now and see if that's changed at all it's gone up to 85 but it still says fewer than 50 verified ratings I don't buy that for a movie that's been out this long mm -hmm. so it's like people who want and plus that rating's gonna be higher anyway because anybody who got up at 10 a.m. on the day of its release on a of course Thursday, they're in the gonna... middle of the week they're obviously going there because they're like it's the dying Disney to see. Yeah. yeah it's it's the same person who cried when they got to go back to Disney World after COVID the first time they sobbed uncontrollably <laughs> yes they did so you know it's it is what it is we'll see it we'll see how it turns out guys so also hbo max is in trouble again sorry just max also there was an amazing tweet from peacock said sorry guys we're not dropping the first part of our name Mm. <laughs> They're gonna call it poop. Cock. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you know, uh, the, the basically what happened is they got mad because like on their new rollout on the website uh, on the on the app, like it lists writers and directors as creators, and they found that very insulting. What? It's kind of, remember when CNN got mad because we got they were getting called content creators. It's so <laughs> exhausting that because they're it's legacy entertainment thinking that they're better than other people it's it's all it is if you hear someone saying that kind of stuff you should respond with like thumbs down like dislikes give them crap in the comments because it's absolutely just horseshit yeah. it's just people with their nose 
all up in the air sniffing their own farts. Yep. Believe me, I'm an actual rock star that's been doing this <laughs> since before content creators were a thing. Guess what? I still create content because that's what I that's Can what you we do. Qualify all of your takes like that. Believe me, I'm a freaking rock yeah, star. I'm a le like I'm a le legitimate gold and platinum selling rock star. Like yep. Just I mean, every time that you give a take on the show, I, I mean, I could, but it'd be annoying. It'd be like the no, it'd be funny. This, this time it's in context. You know, it's like because the thing is, these yes. that's what these people are saying. It's like we existed before the Internet, before you schlebs could just make stuff on your phones. And that's the attitude that's coming that people are giving, you know, and it's it's wrong. It's bad. It it stifles people that want to create and want to want to create art. That's all artists are. So when they when they talk like that. You should mock them for being bougie scumbags. Says, for, all, for 90 years, the Directors Guild has fought fiercely to protect the credit and recognition deserved by directors for the works they create. Ah, it says create. Therefore, you're a creator. Therefore, it's not wrong. <laughs> I'm just not going to start calling it Max. I'm going to keep calling it HBO Max. Yeah. I, I even took a while to say COVID instead of coronavirus out of the same... Like I just need to spite people in power. <laughs> so yeah, guys, uh, like people, people, like you can't appease people like this because they'll be mad about literally anything. They will be mad All... <laughs> anything yeah. to give them something to talk about. All the time, yeah. Oh, Mary, did you see the Sam Smith thing? The yeah, yeah he, he, was, uh, he was ended sad. a concert after. He's four not a rock star songs though. because of vocal issues yeah. i don't know if that i mean that wasn't the part i was like the if it's vocal issues then that makes sense right he's not feeling well his voice gave out like four songs in but then like it's it's about the people who are like it was very scary in the dark theater there but uh, there's kids there so the kids might get the kids might get scared I there guess. were kids at a sam Smith yes concert? they said they're like so i was there with These my 13 year old sick. daughter and i was like was he in the was he in like the hogtied uniform Ew. yet like was he was he wearing the the, the I just BDSM would love gear? for Sam Smith to say, like, my concerts are for adults yeah. Sam, to enjoy. Sam Smith is the most revolting person ever. Like, he used to be somewhat, like, reasonable looking, and all yeah, he's... he's I thought he was a totally normal looking dude. In he the used to be, and now he be, all yeah. he is, is a, he is a, a an idol to everything self-indulgent. Yeah. It's like, he's like gluttony lust like yeah. all of the <laughs> like, all of the disgusting just pick one of the deadly like, yeah sins. like all of the disgusting self-indulgent scummy things that you could possibly be he's just like yeah that's what i am just pick I, a struggle yeah, i'll bang anything i eat everything i'll drink everything i'm lazy look he looks was, was it gross. say once or like you can't be poor and short pick a struggle <laughs> like, <laughs> like uh but like i mean maybe it's just because like before it's like he was basically just less less unfortunate looking Louis Capaldi. So they were like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have to figure out who you're going to be. And he's like, I want to be the gluttonous. He has a collab also coming out with Madonna soon. Well, that's perfect. Also they're, they're right in the same unhinged. line. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe she'll take photos with him and her, with her creepy Instagram photos. If that are all you have to do all day long. Drink out of dog bowls with each other. Yeah, gross. Probably, that, I mean, that's probably yeah. what will end up happening. So like, look, if he has to cancel shows, you know, your voice your voice going out, there's nothing you can do about that. That's not the same thing as like Sean Mendez saying, like, I just don't feel like performing right now. So, wow. Wow. <laughs> like, and then Taylor Swift's like, I'll add shows. I'm a Chad. I'd like to do more. I'm dating Maddie Healy and I'm performing with, uh, what's her name? Who? The, the other collaborator oh Ice Spice who Maddie Healy yeah, just recently insulted she's collabing with Ice Spice and people are mad that her boyfriend was like mocking her racial ambiguity <laughs> basically they were like guessing what she is <laughs> Taylor ethnically. Swift Taylor Swift might have had her villain era but now she's in her problematic era so it's, it's a different era entirely I like I it that's what it is all right guys we are gonna get start oh do you want to do cute or do you want to do cringe of the day first um, let's go with cute and then cringe. Okay, good. Because I have something to start for cute of the day that I forgot to uh, show yesterday. Here we go. There Aww. is a... Wait for it. Wait for it. There is a bokus. I like the background. Yes. On the, on the chair. He looks kind of judgy because he hates it when I take his picture. But it's my favorite part of the, of, the, of the day is to go downstairs and see him look like he's really enjoying his relaxation. And then I do, 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 and like hold that pose. And then he doesn't want to hold the pose. Of course not. No. So we got then there's this one. Do you feel like he's in good spirits? He has been in very good spirits lately. Nice. And he's, uh, he's very mobile. 
And there's Bocas on the box. I still don't know how he got up there. He's incredibly mobile, considering yep. like they were expecting him to be dead six months ago. Yeah. 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 This I guess stem this, cell this stem cell treatment works. I guess so. It's a miracle. That's crazy. Big Pharma all the way. We're going to shill for Big Pharma here now. Where's <laughs> Pfizer? I need them I need, to, I need them to hire me to, to shill for the company. All right. So we've got some other cutes of the day here. I want to start first with uh, Cosimo Dinopoli on Twitter. Says, Nebula, my 100-pound Alaskan Malamu uh, adv- adventure buddy. Says, trying to get my little buddy on the best pop culture podcast. I'm pretty sure we showed this one before, but I've said that before. And then everyone was like, no, it's new. Yeah, so, I don't know if we did. I, but I thought... I thought I, I remembered Nebula. nebula from maybe. maybe. I mean, there, there could be multiple Nebulas, maybe. No way. Maybe. You never know. That is a that is a very, very handsome dog. Yes. Very good looking dog. Then we got this one. This is from Terrence Rice. Says, the cat saga continues. <laughs> Luna, a.k.a. Demama Cat, she's a grandma now, was born in 2019. She's my wife's, but she still hangs out with me every so often. She's a grandma? The cat's a grandma now? That's crazy. Is it giving grandma? <laughs> Cute. Oh, adorable. Yes. Very good. Very good. And then let's do one more. And this is from Honest Adam. It says, this is Wolfenstein von Muffin, which is a fantastic you gotta name. got to be kidding. You're making these names up. I'm then. not making these names up. Wolfenstein von Muffin. All right. It's a good looking cat. Okay. <laughs> We've got cringe. You sent me the cringe earlier, right? I, I honestly, I'm not sure which cringe we're going. I wish with. I could show the, the 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 Tucker Carlson video that I sent you guys, but it's um, it's not a it's not appropriate. It's not politically for, correct. It's also not real. But no, it's, it's not real. But it's depict. amazing. It's it's, it's <clears throat> uh, the, the the decline of society is going to be so, hilarious. So, so this chat one, here, um, listen. Here's the deal. All you have to do is imagine all the things that you that Tucker Carlson literally cannot say. And then imagine yeah. him saying them, and that's what the clip is. Yes. All right. Uh, so th- we la- love landlords. Yes. Here we go. So here's how, as a landlord, I try to make the eviction process as nice as possible for people. Here's an example of the eviction notice. This person, unfortunately, didn't pay their rent for about four months. This is the physical notice, and I'll put this in a card. On top of that, <laughs> a Starbucks $25 gift card. And this particular card I thought was funny because they have a... So here's how... As a- <laughs> <laughs> the way it just cuts off. <laughs> That's I gotta love be a that guy. Oh man, of those course. glasses too. Maybe those, not. Those glasses know. are something. All right. Uh, well, you know, we we love landlords. We here. love landlords. I, and I only love them because the left has an irrational hatred of landlords, and it's weird. So, you know, it is what it Very is. Very weird. Yeah, let's move on, guys. Let's get started. Or as they said earlier, all right. There. See, I did it. All right. All right. Uh, Mr. Beast gets arrested by police officers for a prank that he pulled one year ago. That is the headline. It's completely 110% not fake news. It's It's very real. Yeah. So what happened was uh, he pulled a prank on another YouTuber a year ago where he pretended like he was taking one of his crew. And this guy gets him back by hiring actual cops to prank arrest him. And all I have to say is this is your tax dollars at work, ladies and gentlemen. At the very least, maybe they were off duty, but they were in real police cars using real gas. Where? No, they put him in a real jail cell and everything. So at first, he planned to do this uh, outside of Twitter headquarters. In New York. Because Mr. Beast had a meeting scheduled with Elon. Well, they're not arresting anyone there. They've got time. They went all the way to New York for this. The NYPD? Yeah, and the NYPD signed a contract. with the New York contractually Whoa. to do this whole charade, but then the meeting got canceled. They ain't got other shit to do. Well, they're not they arresting got, it. They're, they're not arresting or prosecuting They got anyone. Jordan Neely's to arrest. Yeah, and that's it. <laughs> and then release. Um, and then that meeting got canceled, so he had to fly all the way to North Carolina, made a new contract with the local police to do it again, and they also agreed. This is because the cops are too busy not arresting anyone or doing their yeah. actual jobs. So they're like, of course we have the time to take place in your YouTube pranks. Yeah. Also, the one cop with the like w- with the mohawk just doesn't look like a real. He doesn't look like a real person. It looks they fake. are real. Cops. I know. I know they are. But and like, they were pretty good actors considering that this yeah. is their first gig. Um, so they put him they, they pulled him over and they said it was because of his window tints. Yeah. And Mr. Beast got arrested. And they put him in the cop car, and he still thought it was a joke. He was, like, riffing back and forth with the cop. And then eventually, 
he just stops talking altogether. Yeah. He stops answering the questions because he thinks it's real. <laughs> and then they take him to jail and they put him in a jail cell. And I, you know, Mr. Peace needs to educate himself about his rights because he didn't have his rights read to him. Nope. So that should be the first red well, he flag. Well, he would have been able to get it thrown out then. If it had been an actual yeah. arrest, he'd have been able to get it thrown out to him. I wonder if maybe there's like some type of rule in place that reading those rights is actually something they can't fake do. Like, maybe. maybe. That's they, what I thought. Like maybe they can't form, maybe because that would make it a formal yeah. arrest or something like that. Yeah, that's what or I thought. something like that. Like They put him in the jail cell and had him, like he asked for food and water and they didn't give him. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> they should have hired like, and then just like a huge biker looking dude to be in there with him. Like would have been. Yeah, incredible. that would have like, been funny. Like some, and his name's Tiny. Like it's a, <laughs> it's a big, enormous dude in a jean jacket named Tiny. So he's pacing back and forth and then. They, they took his mug shots and everything. Yeah. And then he got a call uh, from this other YouTuber. What if Mr. Beast had just run? What, what, what if he just gunned it? He got it? got. Yeah, what if, what if he just gunned it and just like, I'm not, you're not taking me alive, copper, and like took off. They start off. like firing rubber yeah. bullets. <laughs> <laughs> I just like, nothing is real anymore. And like, you have to wonder, like, look, cops these days, you know, they're, they're not arresting anyone. And even when they do, they're, they're let off. Are they going to fake prosecute someone next? There was that thing recently. With, wasn't there some guys chat might be able to help me with this didn't something happen recently where a dude does like goes on jury they have a dude go on jury duty and the whole thing is fake it's like some celebrity like literally every every aspect of our culture wow. and and our institutions is being made a mockery <laughs> by people with dslr cameras and youtube channels and it's kind of amazing um they also sold merch with jimmy's mugshot that's gold it. that's gold um, and this is going to be part of his Get Got series. Yeah. Mr. Beast got got. Like, what if then Mr. Beast just sues the police department? Like, he's like, look, I was emotional distress. No, I thought I was sport. going to jail. He was a good sport about it. Yeah. It's just a, it's amazing to me because nothing, re it really does feel like nothing's real to me anymore. Like these, were these cops on, was it their day off? It better have been their day off. And then the, the, <laughs> the taxpayers better not have paid for the gas in those cop cars. I'm just surprised that there hasn't been backlash yet saying that this is racist because obviously Mr. Beast is white. Yeah. So oh yeah, like, yeah. Oh, well, of course a white man wouldn't panic when he's being arrested. Yeah. Um, also, but it is it is it is, is a uniquely white person thing to do. Like no nobody else is faking getting arrested. It's That's sort just, of like no. those those white guys that make videos doing parkour on the top of skyscrapers, yeah. and all of the comments are like, "Only white people yeah. could do this." Like white people don't care about their lives. <laughs> why would you Why would you go up there and do that? But how yeah. would we accomplish anything excellent if we if we were afraid all the time? So yeah, so and the prank was uh, it, it was so well organized. I do recommend everyone the the videos up on the lab bible article but i do recommend going to to youtube and finding it because it's it's a, a great testament uh, testament to how important editing is the storytelling in the actual video of the prank process is fantastic and it's really really well done and you're right mr beast is at the very least a very good sport about it maybe we could uh see you couldn't do that here we can't have tim fake arrested because there's been too many actual swattings we can't we can't have stuff just fake happen here well fake any Anything involving law enforcement in this place can't you can't fake nope it. can't fake it weren't they claiming that it was like tax evasion was the reason he got arrested <laughs> that, that that makes yeah in the in the original thing they said yeah they're like oh you had a warrant out for something else yeah so you know you know mr beast man he's he bought all those homes for his employees maybe he just didn't pay his taxes on those houses property taxes maybe He's, he's got to pay it and get it over with so <laughs> like i can't think of a like you really do have to be quite smart to come up with this this type of stuff and it takes a lot of work like this is not something you can do like in a day like this took a oh, lot no, of yeah. planning to do something like this and it really is like i'm the type of person where i'm never just going to assume that he's going to make it to the meeting in new york i'm always going to assume that something is going to come up and something's going to go wrong and did, prevent did it he from ever happening. reschedule the meeting with elon yeah that's a, that's a very good question and i think what it must have been about was elon wanting uh to like sign a contract with Mr. Beast so that he posts all of his content on Twitter instead of YouTube. 
That would be crazy. Because they're starting to host more video content. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I mean, anywhere Mr. Beast goes, like imagine if Mr. Beast just went to Rumble. Yeah. <laughs> that, like, That'd be crazy. It, like even if even if it cuts his subscriber count by uh, by seventy percent, that still puts him at several several million subscribers. I wanted to yeah. contrast this with an update on the streamer from the UK, Secret Mizzy, who we were talking about recently. Yep. He did actually go on Pierce Morgan. It wasn't a joke. And it was just 10 minutes of pure comedy gold, them talking over each other, Pierce Morgan just verbally berating this guy, and he totally deserves every minute of it. But uh, I wanted to just play a clip so we can... Uh, the the minute and 10 second one? Yeah. The, the full thing? Yeah, it's, it's, it feels... The guy, like, blatantly uses the race card. It's yeah. so despicable. It also, it, this, t this one minute clip feels like 10 minutes to me when I'm watching it. So here we go. Uh, let's go to the three-person screen. There we go. Stand. Why there's no real remorse here? Why do you not no understand what, is, what, do you mean, why what is the no consequences remorse? of your actions I went to go apologize off social media. I could have recorded that apology and that would have been another viral video. Whether it's hate or whatever. Literally, hate whatever. brings money. Hate brings likes. Hate brings views. It doesn't matter. Love He's right hate, about that. It still brings views. Why, would, why do you prefer to do the hateful stuff? Because it's easier. It's not like I prefer to do the hateful stuff. It's just like it's easier to do the hateful stuff. Why are you laughing? No. And I think it's fun. Obviously, yeah. I don't think it's fun, but... You're a funny person. You do think it's funny. <laughs> You're a funny person. You do. I've seen the videos. You do Obviously, think it's just really funny. At the time, I think it's funny. My fan base thinks it's funny, and it's we outside, isn't it? It's a movement. But what's the deep movement? down, what's the movement? Deep down, being free. It's the movement to go into another person's house and scare their children. Mm -hmm. I'm not letting anyone tell you nothing. That's why I can do all of this stuff. I have. To, I'm the most hated person on the internet right now. No, but you're not. Most people like, don't know who you are. Who is the most hated person on the internet now? Fuentes. Uh, is it? Too niche. He's not well known enough. Too niche. There has Probably to be Elon. Niche. Elon or, or I guess Andrew Tate. Oh, Donald oh, Trump. Oh, yeah, Donald Andrew Trump. Tate's Donald Trump, also Trump, up or, there. Trump or Tate. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Well, he's he's working his way up. He'll get there eventually. Get him a Make America Great TikTok Again. Tiktok. Nah, he's he's the best he could do is the most hated person in England. He because <laughs> he's because he doesn't affect anyone else's life except for people in England. Ben, whatever you say in it, whatever you say. Please. Most people watch this will have never heard of you and care you even say, less. Well, now they are. They're, they're well, I have them on. See me, now no, they are. they'll just, think, they they'll just look at the way are. you're behaving now and they'll think, yeah, he's a complete moron. All right. <laughs> okay, the clip we watched was longer. So, yeah, like, uh, it's, he, he, the kid's insufferable. Spears is insufferable. They're both insufferable together. It's kind of a beautiful marriage. Pierce Morgan is actually tolerable when he's sitting next to this guy. I, I liked it. They, like, they both talk over each other constantly, and it's just like, you deserve each other. <laughs> yeah. it's, 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 it's amazing. He said, the kid is I'm empty on the inside and the outside. Pierce he also said... Well, the UK laws are weak. That's not my fault. Yeah, he does point out that it's it's basically your own fault that the government is not actually enforcing the laws. Mm -hmm. See, we're we're busy over here fake arresting people, and they're over there not arresting people that they're actually supposed to be arresting. Also, all of the comments were like, "I'm black. We don't claim him." Yeah. Well, you know, no, like, and that's the annoying Nor part. Nor right? like, The kid brought in the race card and had nothing to do with the discussion. And anybody in their right mind finds somebody doing that stuff to be ridiculous, no matter what they look like. Mm -hmm. And Piers was obviously. Obviously, like, I, I don't care what color your skin is. I just think you're a moron. <laughs> Always good to see the word moron make a, make a comeback. In that accent, it sounds better. I like imbecile. I imbecile? Oh, the, yeah, I, I just put the other day, I posted a clip of the show Murdoch Mysteries, which was like this, uh, like, British show that's, it's, it's like cops in the 1800s. And they, they kind of do all these points where they try to make reference, like, oh, we're clearly in this time. And it's one where there's, there's a girl who she's clearly, she's mentally handicapped. And the guy goes, it's hard to, like, the, the guy, cr she creates like these, this full diorama. And he goes, it's hard to believe that a moron could make something so, so detailed. The guy goes, I don't believe that's the term we use anymore, sir. The correct term is imbecile. <laughs> and then he goes, oh. It's, it's like I get the sense of humor yeah. of the writer who's like patting himself on the back as, as he wrote that. Mm -hmm. Another thing so. that Mizzy said in this interview is people are getting hurt over something that didn't happen to them uh so if you why see, do you care bro yeah it's like if i saw an isis beheading video and i was disturbed by it then uh, you, it's like why do you care so much mary it has you're nothing not to do with you got, you're not the one who got it's none beheaded. of your business um and this comment said being bothered by someone else putting in fear for their life is basic human empathy that mizzy doesn't understand this speaks volumes to his mentality this is fatherless behavior. <laughs> it's well, funny because Pierce asked him about his family and what does his family has to say about his behavior. He said he doesn't talk to his mother and his 
mother has told him to stop doing this stuff. Yep. He doesn't talk to his sisters and no mention of a father. Yeah, it's the problem. Press on that. Where's the father? Where are the fathers? In this case, I think it's one of those things where for the for the kid, he liked it because it, it gave him the upper hand either way. If he gets arrested, he gets to claim discrimination. If he doesn't, then he gets to keep doing it and developing likes and shares and clicks. And also now he says like he's pivoting to streaming. So he's going to be like live streaming and doing game content and, yeah. and chat content. So, you know, that's uh, it's his unfortunately, it's a very, very smart business model. It's just a very ghoulish business model. That's not very pleasant. I do like IRL streaming as a genre uh, when it doesn't involve assaulting people. Like usually it's just somebody walking around a public space and they have TTS on and people donate to say offensive stuff in an anime girl voice. And then it pisses people off around them. And yeah. yeah, it's a public disturbance, but it's not nearly the same as like pouncing on people and threatening to kill people yeah. and home invasion. It's not the same thing. Yeah, not good. Like he's playing the victim. He knows what he's doing. I just don't know what the, uh, what the, anal the analogous actions for this would have been 10, 20 years ago. Like usually it used to be like if you were gonna do stupid stuff to go viral on the internet, you did it to yourself. Just planking, maybe. Yeah, planking. <laughs> it's, well, Such innocent times. There, there are like, uh, there are a lot of memes that are like millennials. I can't believe these Gen Z people do such stupid stuff for clout on the internet. And it's like millennials ten years ago, and it's them like planking on the side of buildings. And the stuff video like that. of him stealing that elderly woman's dog and running away with it was really sad. Yeah. By the way, like the the dog looked terrified. Yep. Yeah. Like, well, of course. It's just disgusting. And then he like was like, oh, but you don't know the context, the context. I love like, why does any the context, context matter? He's there, like, stealing someone's dog. There's any context whatsoever that makes it OK. And he OK, basically, here's the outcome. He has been fined 365 pounds and he has been given a criminal behavior order, which bans him from posting any content on social media without express permission of people in his videos. And he is banned from entering any private residential property without permission for two years. Isn't that kind of like... Is that not already <laughs> illegal? I don't know. Maybe the laws are different in the UK. Entering someone's private property without permission. I thought that was a crime, but apparently not. He has two years to count down until he can continue invading just people's homes. Day one, he just films a video right away walking into somebody's house without permission. He's also been banned from entering any schools or retail properties uh, until 2025. Ugh. Breaching it would be a criminal offense and could land him with prison time or an unlimited fine. Uh, the UK is a clown country. It really is. It's just a fucking joke. You tell him. Take that. And none of the people there are allowed to use lethal force when they're being lethally threatened. No, they, of course so not. Of they, course they do have allowed. armed law enforcement, but they're special units that are not yeah. the, the... So that cop in the video that was like giving him the notice... Was so timid. He wasn't armed. No, like, and he was so timid. Like he's like, I feel really bad about having to scold it's you, so little miscreant. It's so yeah. stupid. So, all you right. Know, the, the, the criminals take advantage of the the society's desire to be kind to them yep oh we got one right there um lord crimson tv said personally john bernthal is my favorite punisher i especially love his story of going to a comic book store for research and the clerk gave him specific comments and said don't f it up yeah i do really like john bernthal as the punisher but that's because i love that season of daredevil dearly like, I love that second season of Daredevil so much. It's so very good. And I like it a lot more than I liked his actual, you know, spinoff series on Netflix. I will say seeing Wayne Knight play Micro in the Ray Stevenson. Wayne Knight is the guy who plays Newman from Seinfeld. And seeing him play Micro in a, in a Punisher movie, I felt like I was, like, tripping. And I had just gone back in time and was living some weird alternate reality. Where and it's and it's one of the more like I don't remember it being that violent. I was a mess in 2008, so whenever I saw it, uh, I don't remember it being as violent or as gory as it was. But it's it's just incredible. But you're right, I do love the the John Bernthal as the Punisher too. Uh, back to your point though, you're right. Like there's like there's a quote from uh, from an episode of Person of Interest where he says like society rests on the notion that we treat criminals better than they treat their victims. Yeah, um, and that's what this guy's taking advantage of. Every criminal does it. Uh, the 
currently in the United States, you see an increase of crime nationwide. Mm -hmm. And that is specifically because district attorneys have decided that they're not going to prosecute small crimes. If you want to keep, if you want a city to be safe, you prosecute the small crimes, the medium sized crimes and the big crimes. If you don't prosecute the small crimes, the areas that crime tends to happen start to degrade they look bad people stop caring about it this is this is what happens to societies all the time you cannot allow criminals to just behave poorly and expect it not to degrade your society you're going to have more violence more stabbings more crime I remember, if you don't punish criminals i remember when all the articles started coming out about how about the racist nature of broken windows policies for policing and stuff like that in New York, you know, in New yeah. York City and stuff like that and stop and frisk and which is not just stop and frisk. It's stop talk. You know, mm -hmm. you have to you have to still develop a, a cause for for doing the search, whether they actually obey that or not. I'm certainly I'm absolutely no stand for the police department in any way. And to be form. honest with you, like I understand that the police did profile, but it doesn't like the color of your skin isn't the only thing they're looking for. Yeah. Like if you're a, if you were a black dude or a Hispanic dude and you didn't dress like an urban dude, yeah. like a just like a street dude, if you just wore other clothing, yeah. just any other style, you would you probably weren't going to get interrogated. And there, there's something you know? unfortunate about that. And that's right? not like, that's that, not me saying that I'm pro pro uh, stop and frisk either. I no. think stop and frisk is a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Absolutely. I'm just saying that it wasn't specifically only color based. It is based on a lot of factors. That's why they stopped you. Like if you look if you if you were a black dude wearing a suit, they weren't going to stop you thinking that you were a gangbanger. You know. I mean, they they would actually like the show Power would talk about this all the time about like how you had to dress a certain way, mm -hmm. like because it keeps you out of the public eye and it you know it makes you less of a I when like I specifically dress a certain way to not look like the kind of guy that I am yeah. like I wear you know nice clothes I kind of had like I have nice shoes I wear light colored shirts and stuff I don't look like a gun guy and I do it on purpose I don't walk around wearing 511 and tactical stuff yeah. none of my bags are molly yeah. I don't have a bunch of American flags on my stuff or whatever because that that's a dead giveaway my car my my Jeep doesn't have any stickers on it no he's, one got all, he's got all his like I heart the NRA stickers just <laughs> all over the back <clears throat> The only sticker that I have on any of my gun cases is an Apple sticker, like an Apple, like yeah. a Macintosh sticker, because I don't want people to know. Like, I don't want people to pick me up and be like, "Yeah, oh, that guy's probably got a gun." Yeah, you know. Yeah, so. I still remember like when I, I used to work for a like I used to work at a gas station, and I remember like there was a, a motorcycle club that would come through there from time to time, and they had like the best like their the vests they had were like specifically designed to conceal their their weapons uh, yeah. like like very very well didn't print at all yeah. anywhere on their body and i just remember once because the guy goes to get like his checkbook he goes whoops wrong pocket and and like flashes the <laughs> you know the the magazine of his weapon and i was like <laughs> i mean he, i don't think he was actually supposed to have it in there but like you know eh, mm -hmm. but whatever it is what but, it is but you, but the thing is like you if you want to avoid attention you can dress to avoid attention if i go to new york city and I'm dressed in like a flannel and I got shit kickers on. And, you know, it's like people can be like, that dude's from out of town, you know. But if I'm go if I go there and I dress like I'm dressed now, you know, like people wouldn't really notice me. I would, you know, fit right in. So. But, you know, what wouldn't happen here is you wouldn't have people just walking into random houses because they don't want to, you know, yes. they don't want ventilation. That's, that that's bad. True. That's not good. So they know not to do that here. Another reason why America is better than the U.K., <laughs> yeah, this this UK newscaster replied to someone and was like, well, you are allowed to use reasonable force in your home in the UK. You can strike first, but just probably not with an AR-15. <laughs> As if someone did to today, like I was, someone said something, I, was, I responded to someone about a rifle or whatever, and someone was like, oh, is an AR-15 really that good in, in a home defense situation? It's like, entry teams, yeah. anti-terrorist teams, SWAT teams, police forces, all over the Western Western world, specifically select the AR-15 pattern rifle for entry into into buildings. Yep. The reason they do it is not because it's bad. Yep. It is because it is good. 
And then the guy continued to argue with me, and I'm like, you're a moron. But As they usually do. They, yeah. But it's like, they were, seriously, like people that say, oh, AR-15s are not good. The, if you look at cops, if you look at the, the military, you look at SWAT teams and, and people that go into buildings where bad guys are that, are that have guns, they go in with rifles. They go in with AR-15s, usually 10 and a half to maybe 12 and a half inch length. And that's because that is the weapon that is the best for that particular application. Yep. All right. We got some super chats there, Mary. Andrew Jacobs said, Mary, great job on Elijah's podcast. F Destiny. Hi, Brad. Um, Thoughts, thank you. Mary? Yeah, I was on Slightly Offensive last night. And uh, that was How's fun. that Destiny situation going, Mary? We did address the Destiny How's situation. How's it going? And uh, I'll say thank you to Raven Thor because uh, this person posted the clip where I said on the, that episode that divorce is permissible in with grounds of abuse even in the church and that was what the whole argument was based on that i didn't say that and i did and now it's crickets which uh what else can you expect funny how that people? happens right when you when <laughs> points it out like you said like even before the actual clip came out you said what you're looking at is heavily edited and deceptive to what actually right. happened in the discussion, which just is the, the point. The expectation is ridiculous too. Like, I don't care if some person I don't know, like Sieg Hiles next to me, and I, like, if I stay silent, that means that I'm a Nazi? Mm. Like, shut up. It's compelled, so dishonest. Compelled, it's like, I said, it's, it's yeah, like, it's you'll speech. make people never want to do anything like that again if every time you go on to a show, you're not just judged by what you do say, by what you don't say. If it's a one-on-one -on -one discussion, that's one thing. But in a sure. room of 10 people, and everyone shouting We are shouting four and a it. half hours in. Yeah. My entire body feels like it's on fire. <laughs> I'm sweating. Maybe I'm thinking like, about what I'm going to do when I get home. Four what? hours is a long And I'm supposed long to be podcast. mentally present enough. <laughs> Mary's just like, I'll tell you what I was thinking about. Dinner. Yeah. I wanted to eat. <laughs> yeah, I was. <laughs> Tech said, love cringe of the day. I request a cringe of the month award and leaderboard. Oh, yeah. Start cringe, voting. Cringe. Mary finds the majority of the cringe. I do. Yes. I'm a cringe connoisseur. Deuce Boogaloo said 10 crisis parties and Mary has to wear a Pikachu onesie. Is that a thing? Is that supposed to be a punishment? I would love to wear pajamas to work. So, yes, 10 crisis parties. Let's go. Also, I saw yeah. somebody say... Um, yeah, we don't even have one yet today. What yeah. are you guys doing? Well, yeah, come on, guys. <laughs> Step uh, it up. Well, they, 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 Legit. They, they got me to not wear a hat the other day. Phil, that, yell at them. The, the, yes. <laughs> Let's go! Yeah, it's, it's like <laughs> five crisis parties and Phil will yell at you like he's a disappointed parent. They want to be degraded. Yes. Shane I'm going to start Wilder. looking for, I'm going to look for names in the chat and just start calling people. <laughs> <Yeah. up. laughs> Bad on, Kitty guys. Mama, Because Reasons, Ellen Thompson, Jacob Elder. Come on. Let's go. Who else? <laughs> Shane H. Wilder. Let's go, Mary. Shane H. Wilder. He said, I can't do the therapist, Brett, but I, but can I offer you a nice egg in this trying time? Yeah. Actually, never mind. Y'all are going to see the Little Mermaid. I don't think even that will work. I don't even, I'm just so exhausted with the, I, I can't wait to go there. If there is not a room full of kids crying, looking at the screen saying, oh my gosh, there's a mermaid that looks like me. I'm calling the bullshit on all the advertising. Every kid in that theater better be crying and pointing at the screen and turning to their mom and saying, mommy, I look just like. She's black yeah. like me, mommy. I don't care if they're even, <laughs> even if they're, even if they're not black, they better say it too. She's a shark like me, mommy. Exactly. <laughs> One Shane more. Shane Wilder we'll said, "Sam Smith treats deadly sins like Pokemon. Got to catch them all." <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so true. All right, we are going to move on, ladies and gentlemen. So, I want to talk a little bit about a couple of articles here. This is going to be a little bit harder to get all the way through because there's a lot to it. So, there was an article yesterday. We discussed the idol. Mary wanted to talk about how creepy Sam Levinson is, right? Mm -hmm. Like that was that was the main point yesterday. Mary, not a fan. Mary's not a fan of that. Mary's not a fan of the uh, of the. How would you describe it? Well, we address the excessive sexuality and nudity in all of his shows. M Mary is looking at this from a moral perspective. Yeah. I just think these people are hypocritical scumbags, and I will tell you why. So this article says Jane Addams slams outrage over Lily, Ray's, uh, Lily Rose Depp's nude scenes. Why would nudity be a bad thing? Well, I agree with you. Lady who I don't know. I agree I don't. with you. I, I agree with you. Why would it be a bad thing? Speak I'll, for yourself. Oh yeah, yes. This is just this is just me talking right now. She says when asked how she felt, uh, she felt.
felt nudity was approached on set in the script, Adams replied with Lily Rose Depp, why would nudity, oh, let me put it, why would nudity be such a bad thing? Why are people talking, what are people here's, talking about? Here's the full quote. She said, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. She says, I don't understand. <laughs> I, I would don't... say, with Lily there Rose. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> no, I want to start with from Lily this. Rose. Why would nudity be a bad thing? What are people talking about? I don't understand. I don't even believe that mindset is real. That whole mindset seems fake to me. This outrage and pearl clutching that's going on about a nude actress who's beautiful. When did that become outrageous? When I was young, I wish I had done more of it. I did films where I'm running around half naked. I don't care. I don't understand, you know? It's film for beep sakes. Well, I will tell you, scumbag lady. For beep sakes, huh? <laughs> I will tell you, scumbag lady, why this is a problem. Because then we have this article. Priyanka Chopra says director wanted to see her underwear. Called it an extremely dehumanizing moment. This is the problem. Guys, you do not get to be a revolving door of debaucherous, de uh, degradating be behavior in which you pretend like the culture is, isn't, well, that it isn't your fault that you're ruining the culture. You don't get to act like sexuality is no big thing for the first 10 to 15 years of your career. And then as your career starts to wind down, say, oh, I was treated so badly. Because we know that's what this is what's going to happen here. Lily Rose Depp in about 15 to 20 years time will then come out and say, Oh, I was I was taken advantage of on set. I was not treated with respect. You don't have to wait 10 to 15 years. Yeah. Whenever Sam Levinson gets some kind of Me Too or cancellation moment, yeah. which he almost certainly will, she will capitalize on it and, and comment on how he treated her. You don't I want to get... give context to the Priyanka Chopra thing, yeah. though, because we didn't talk about that. She said, I'm undercover. I'm seducing the guy in the movie. Obviously, that's what girls do when they're undercover. But I'm seducing the guy, and you have to take off one piece of clothing at a time. I wanted to layer up. The filmmaker w was like, no, I need to see her underwear. Otherwise, why is anybody coming to watch this movie? He didn't say it to me. He said it to the stylist in front of me. It was such a dehumanizing moment. It was a feeling of... I'm nothing else outside of how I can be used. My art is not important. What I contribute is not important. It's a and then she, to be cycle. fair, she did quit the film because right. she didn't like that filmmaker. But also, I mean, if you're trying to, you know, rid Hollywood of all of these creeps, why not name the guy? It's the industry. It's when you're a at a never, point in your career where you can name it's a, the guy, name it, the guy. Do it's it. a never-ending cycle of glorifying and glamorizing sexuality, which I would say is 110% fine. I'm not a moralist. I don't care. But you don't get to then come back 15 years later because we all know that's where this ends up. You say, yeah, it's, pro it's possible that Sam Levinson has some accusations come out against him. But even if no accusations come out against him, in 20 years' time, Lily Rose Depp is going to write a book. And she's going to write a book about how on the set of The Idol, which got horrible reviews, I uh, I was treated like a piece of meat and I was constantly told to be naked and put a freaking egg in my vagina. Like that's, that's what they're going to say. And then not, I'm going to have to, and, an then, and then I'm going to have to take uh, the, my knife out of my pocket and remove it from me. So I don't stab myself in the hand from the insufferability <laughs> of your virtue signaling, because this is a revolving door cycle that happens endlessly with these people and they never change. And that's would be one problem. The other problem here is then, then they blanket statement and make it seem like it's our fault. It's, society's fault it's not hollywood's fault that these things are happening if you want to make it somebody's fault then take responsibility first if you actually want to glamorize sexuality and you don't think that's a big thing fine i don't give a crap but you don't get to do both you don't get to have it both ways kick rocks hate these people well i mean can we acknowledge the fact that maybe women in these situations do have a limited amount of agency. And oh boy. <laughs> and whether, whether true because or not. Because of that should be treated differently than men. I think that this comes from the pervasive lie that men and women are the same mm -hmm. and that they should be treated the same. But we all know that that's a lie. We all know that men and women are fundamentally different in their nature. And for that reason, they should be treated differently, right? They're treated with they, they so they should be treated with kid gloves because they're already treated. I'm not with talking kid gloves. about kid gloves. I'm talking about woman gloves. Yeah, they're, they're already they're already treated as if they're mentally deficient by society. I don't think women like, are mentally deficient. They're I not. Just think I'm that saying they're, they're treated that way. They're allowed to act. Men. They're allowed to act this way. And then in 15 years' time, when they say, "I had no idea this was going on," yes, you did. 
People told you, somebody told you, uh, a lot of these people say, I had managers, don't talk to that guy. Don't go up to Harvey Weinstein's room. That's a, that's a bad idea. You're not oblivious. You're not stupid. I mean, where is the accountability for Jennifer Lawrence, who <laughs> profusely praised yeah. Harvey Weinstein when she was compelled to do so yep. back in 2013? And then when Me Too happened and all of this came to light for the public, Hollywood knew the whole time they were running cover for him. She's not going to be... Uh, held accountable for that? Nope. She could well, actually she was the, be considered complicit in all of his victimizations that happened. She gets a pass because she was the first times. female action hero. Every so it's fine. single woman that knew about what was going on with Harvey Weinstein, that didn't speak up beforehand, that let other women go up to Harvey yeah. Weinstein, they all share in a, a little bit of the blame for all the rapes that happened after them. Let's so, have a Me Too for them. Yeah, like. There's a small amount, like a tiny little bit. I don't, I, it, is, it is Harvey Weinstein that did the raping, but every single woman that didn't speak up and... And, and, and man. Was, and yeah, and, and man. even well, still, yeah. Priyanka Chopra is running cover for this unnamed filmmaker yeah. who she says was so dehumanizing and predatory towards her mm -hmm. because she's not naming him. When it's 20 years later, she said this happened in like 2003, she's at a point in her career where she is essentially anti-fragile and she can speak out but she won't because she's a coward it's the it's the culture of the industry they spend it's like it's it's almost maddening that you go to these websites and the articles are like right next to each other it's like all the problematic things that are going on in the industry and then it's the why is it so problematic that women want to do this why is this so, because because the situations are bad and the directors are bad and the and the actresses shouldn't put themselves in that position unless they're willing to be to own up to it and say look those were my choices i own my choices in my 20s not even saying something happened to her Priyanka chopper's not saying chopper's not saying something bad happened to her just that she felt dehumanized right that's fine but you have to be an adult and take responsibility for your own actions you're a, you're an adult you're making choices for yourself you don't get to go back on it later and then pretend like all of the degrading of our culture is our fault schrodinger's adult yes exactly Schrodinger's grown up. <laughs> that's that's an interesting way of putting it, right? Like, yeah. uh, like if you don't open the <laughs> if you don't open the Hollywood dressing room, you don't know whether it's an adult or not. So gross. It's uh, it's, uh, it's it's crazy. Should dude. we get into the conversation that we were having before the show? Go for or, it. Go or for is it. that like not YouTube friendly? Oh, I don't we were know. talking about this because. Uh, right now, there is just a raging debate about whether it's appropriate for 30-year-old men to date 22-year-old women, okay? <laughs> these, these are the biggest problems we have in society right now, uh, and we're adjudicating on it. And, Phil, how about you give your take first? Ha <laughs> ha! Coward. Um, so, my take is... If you are an 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 year old woman and the government and the state considers you an adult and you have agency, if you want to date a 30, 35 year old man, you can. People can disapprove, that's fine, but the idea that there needs to be social ramifications, which is what people are trying to imply when they start doing things like posting about it on social media and stuff like that talking about oh what is this um you know why is this blah 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 this this is about power and etc they have no way of knowing what the actual relationship is like so they have no uh inside information to to decide that it's about power um older guys especially dudes around 30 are gonna probably try and go for you know, 20, 21, 22. I imagine most dudes are trying to go for chicks that are older than 21 if they're like 30. Oh, and because it's a pain in the ass if you're like, if you want to go to like a bar yeah. and you can't get your girlfriend in or whatever, it like, or I imagine it's got to be. I haven't been to bars in fucking ages. But anyways, but like the, uh, the idea on the left or the, the idea that seems to be coming from the left, which used to be sex positive, is that young girls do not have the agency to make decisions like that on their own. Well, then they're not adults. And then there's a whole slew of things that go along with that, you know, with not being a full adult. Yeah. But if you're going to have society decide that at 18 years old that you're an adult, then that's the way they have to be treated. Now, 18 years old is arbitrary. Some things 
18 years old might be a little young for some things 18 years old might be a little old for like if we made kids wait until eight, they were 18 to drive cars that's probably a little old i think probably you know 16 17 is okay um but the the idea that that because people are different um we have to adjust the age for each individual is completely and totally unworkable. So we have to have an arbitrary number to go by. It's 18 is what we have decided on. Mm -hmm. And again, there are some things that I think 18 is old enough. There's some things well, I like, think 18 is not. The but number itself, yes, it's arbitrary. The fact that we need to have a number is not arbitrary. Is that what you're saying, basically? The fact that we needed to choose a number yeah. is not arbitrary. Well, I mean... It, what do you mean? We we did we did yeah. have to treat to yeah. choose a number. That's that's not. But we chose that number yeah. arbitrarily. I I wanted to reference a Twitter thread that I saw recently for this conversation, because uh, it, it gets dicey. There's a lot riding on the assumption that women, especially in that like younger age range that Priyanka Chopra was. Um, they do have like full agency that uh, there's a so there's careers and industries riding on that assumption right now and we're kind of seeing how that's working out for us and I don't think anyone is satisfied with the status quo so here's what it said um, maybe they don't mean to but some people talk about women in a way that equates weaker with dumber it's that we have a natural disposition that is more exploitable Part of feminine nature is agreeableness. We aim to please. This means we suppress feelings of disgust to protect someone's ego. We'll go along with things we don't really want to do. We hate confrontation. We'd much rather feel affirmed and accepted than rejected. The need to be affirmed and, and accepted <clears throat> drives women to do what they do. Exploitation ensues. And I would say explo exploitation especially will ensue in an industry as seedy and amoral as Hollywood. There's a $20 one real quickly. Noah Sanders said, I'm 28 and divorced from a marriage at 21. It's hard to find women my age who have a good head on their shoulders and want kids, but doesn't have any yet. You would have to go for the ones you can find who fit your value system. Yeah, yeah I won't discredit that that's difficult at all. Yep. Um, and this, this thread also said, men experience affirmation in being seen as disagreeable. They feel good when they take risks or get into a fight. Women are the opposite. Being accepted by someone or by a group affirms us, and we will be agreeable to a fault to experience this. This is where so much sexual sin and shame comes in for women. This is why it's critical for men to have principles by which they operate, so there is no temptation to use a woman's agreeableness, her weakness, against her in a moment of passion. Is this why they push is the push is so heavy for like older women and younger men now? I have no idea. There's a push. push. Yeah, uh, for Hollywood, it or against Hollywood it? has pushed for it absolutely in the last decade. Well, it seems like now they're changing their tune and they're they're pushing against it. Yeah, uh, no, older women, younger men. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like that's a that's a thing. Whether we're talking mm -hmm. cougars, desperate housewives, all these things, it's like uh, that's a thing Hollywood's pushed, but maybe because they see it as it's uh, a less dangerous thing to push given Which how is, their proclivities behind the scenes. It's strange because they're so obviously... <laughs> Hold on, older women are absolutely dangerous, but in a completely different completely way different to way. younger women. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, and a lot more fun. <laughs> in... I, I've pointed out that in those situations, if there's a huge age gap and both people are in that relationship because they want to use each other for different things, usually it's that the older person is getting used for their money, the younger person is getting used for or their power, and the younger person is getting used for sex. That's wrong. But it happens so frequently in Hollywood, and that's why we're seeing this like reckoning, because you can't keep operating on the assumption that all of these young women who are, uh, like that thread said, agreeable to a fault, mm -hmm. have full agency. I don't think they do. Well, I don't know what you do about it because I just I hate the the having to read these articles, knowing that in ten years' time we're going to have to read the the inevitable follow up where she says, "I didn't know what I was doing and I was being taken advantage of." We got one from <sighs> because reasons. As an older man, I look for a certain maturity that doesn't drive me insane. If that is tolerable, then I find it acceptable. That makes sense to me. Um, yeah, and in no way am I saying that a relationship between a 22-year-old woman and a 30-year-old man is inherently inappropriate. It's not. I just, uh, 
it, it, for Hollywood, the problem, like I get the dating part, but for me, the Hollywood part is because they seem to always want to reflect back on society as if they didn't play a role in all of the problems they're creating. If they had these beliefs and they just held to those beliefs and whenever something like this came out, they said, look, you, you took the risk, you bit the bullet, you deal with the consequences. I would have less of a problem with that because you're staying intellectually honest and consistent with your morals. And but your, they want to beliefs. have their cake and eat it, it too. too. And I hate that. It's sort of like when celebrities start talking about gun mm. violence and how they want to show responsible gun use on television. Yeah. Because we didn't this. we didn't create the problem, but we're going to solve it. Exactly. That's what we hate. The, the worst thing, the, when it comes to talking about uh, responsible gun use and safety and stuff, I just got this today. There was a guy that was, like, talking about responsible safe and safety and stuff, and I was I was talking about using firearms, and, and he didn't like the way in which I was characterizing him. And I'm like, this is the same kind of guy that's going to tell me that he wants people that have guns to be trained. But then, when you're trained to use a gun, what do you think that looks like? Yeah. Do you think, if you think that it's just like training people to not point the gun at other people, you are wrong. Yeah. When you get training, you get training on how to employ the gun. <laughs> that means training on how to get into a gunfight. Like, if you think training means safety stuff, you're totally wrong. So then when you hear people talking about application use of, of, of a gun, that means a gunfight. And then you say, oh, well, that's not what we want people to. So we want people to safely use guns. Yeah, you safely use the gun by shooting the bad guy. Yeah. That's, what a, that's how you safely use a gun. Yeah. So people that talk about gun safety have this, this imaginary thing in their head where a gun becomes more safe the more training you get. No, the person becomes more deadly the more training you get. So that, like, I, that's something that bothers me and I just wanted to kind of get it off my chest. Anyways. Mm -hmm. There, uh, I mean, it's also like the, if we're talking Hollywood in these industries, yes. they're, they very, like my favorite is when they never clear their line of fire. Like they just, it's just, it just shoot at things where there's clearly something behind them that's going to take, like yeah. that bullet's going to keep traveling. Obviously, you know, the Hollywood has, has, you know, some, some, some room to learn yeah. when it comes to but gun safety. They, Look at Alec Baldwin and stuff, but still, you know, there in, in a lot of it, it's like, it's like, look, there's, you have to draw the line between what's meant to be entertainment. And obviously it's not always going to be 110% accurate, but that's also depending differently. Like I make the joke where it's like, I don't care if a criminal says silencer, but I care when a cop says silencer <laughs> because a cop would know that that's not the proper term. Eh. Like, uh, yeah. you just know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, like if I see a criminal shoot without paying attention to what's going on behind him, I I'm like, okay, it's a bad guy. You he, know, wouldn't, you, he wouldn't yeah. do that. But a cop should look to clear his line of fire to make sure that he's not going to cause collateral damage. They don't. Yeah, they, Did you hear about the gunfight? That this was a couple yeah. years back. There's a gunfight in. Uh, but they're portraying in New aspirational York. cops, not. There was a gunfight yeah. in New York outside of the Empire State Building, and seven bystanders took rounds. Ugh. Seven bystanders, and it was all we've got, cops. We got a super chat from the last of my kind. Half your age plus seven rule, anyone. Obviously, there are exceptions that are 18 plus, but there is a point with when anyone, anything with 18 at the end that causes someone to make the Mary Bleh sound. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what is that? Bleh. Uh, yeah. uh, training over spending mm -hmm. on, the, on the gun thing. Yeah. Yep. I've heard di different schools of thought on half your age plus seven, but if you just go ahead and do it uh, in your head, you know, everyone can figure that out. Isn't um, it exactly like it's 22 and 30? It's, uh, yeah, for you, it like, uh, for like uh, anybody over the age of 21 or 22, like. like now, if, if this guy is looking for under or, yeah. or, or equal to. Or only looking then for. Then that's weird. But, yeah. it, but, it, but even, isn't it the type of thing where it's like you, you the point of it to like, they, there's people that did all that research. Oh, we've got right? another one from right. Per Pill. They, they listen to you, Phil. Yep. He said, why are we talking about this like it's new? Men have always dated younger women. I'm 33 and women, a woman my age either, women my age either have kids and don't want more or they're waiting for Prince Charming. Yep. It just depends on maturity levels. There's a, there's a lot of amazing memes where it says like men over the age of 21 and it shows your two paths. It says like alone forever or stepdad. <laughs> <laughs> those, are, those are your paths should you choose to uh, choose, choose wisely, mm -hmm. whichever one that might be. Uh, in, in the dating one, you know, whatever. I don't care. I just want Hollywood to stop being a bunch of hypocritical scumbags. That's, that's what I care about. Jesus. Never happens. Like, 
I just want one of these articles to come out where a person's like, oh, maybe they should have thought of that before they, you know, when they were when they were 20. Because it's like, or at least one of these articles would be like, well, we looked back at their history and they were writing a, exactly the opposite when they were when they were 25 and like when they were 22. I'm like, look, yes, 22 is still young, but you're still an adult and you're still expected to, if you're in charge of your own career, you're expected to make choices as an adult. We can talk all day long about uh, whether they're accountable for their actions, whether they should be, whether they have agency. But the fact is, legally, in the eyes of the law, they should be treated the same as men. Whether that's mm -hmm. a utopian thinking, maybe. Well, in Hollywood, it's everyone's vices mm -hmm. dialed up to a thousand. So, like, yeah. the need for affirmation is dialed up majorly in the women in Hollywood. Yeah. And the the lust and the greed is dialed up to a thousand for all the men in Hollywood. So where do you think that leaves them? This is just a reflection of all of the vices that society is struggling with right now, but dialed up. But none of these, like none of these people look at this article and say, uh, and say the, this whole mindset, this fake outrage and pearl clutching. Well, how do you think we got to the Harvey Weinsteins of the world, lady? Like, how did we get there? Like shocking. Shocking yeah. to me. It's like they want to be able to have the outrage and the moral superiority, but they don't want to have any of the convictions that lead to making it a better place, to actually doing better. No. And, and all I want is some consistency. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> all right, let's, uh, let's go to Super Chats. We got some there. Marco said, have you tried making sliders using Hawaiian rolls? That doesn't sound good to me. No. Hawaiian, Hawaiian rolls taste great, but they're not like... We've talked about Hawaiian rolls on the show before because I had this epiphany Ooh. that... Hawaiian rolls are actually a reflection of humanity because we're all connected, but we're also distinct. Mary, that, that is beautiful in a way that is kind of shocking that it didn't come from someone high. I was just trying to be like Ian for a second. There. You, you were, you were channeling your inner Ian there. Well, <laughs> I'd we, love to hear his take on the Hawaiian roll. Well, metaphor. we're very close to a second crisis party, so we'll hear Ian again shortly. Purple said, tuck it, Carlson. Oh, man. <laughs> ah! Uh, man. That, we're not that, talking about that. No, we're not. <laughs> oh, is it true? Like, I had to ask, like, is it true? The, the, the whole Target debacle, everything going on with Target, mm -hmm. is it true that there was no Tucket stuff for the kids, just there the was, adults? There was Tucket stuff, but it was not specifically for geared kids. towards kids. Okay. Yes, right. if I understand correctly. I, I have heard that they had Tucket stuff. It might have been with the other LGBT We're stuff. We're calling it Tucket stuff now. Whatever, I don't know. We should call it, they, I mean, they should call, the, if they really wanted to stick it to the cons, they would call them the Tucker Carlsons. Uh. The Tucker, yeah, Tucker Carlsons, and they'll just. Tucket Carlsons. <laughs> Anyways, I, if I understand correctly, yes, it was not geared towards children. It was, uh, it was along with the pride line for the month. Did you see that like gynecologist on Twitter that said women actually sometimes need tucking equipment because of their large lady? <laughs> <laughs> Wash it in the sink, like, lady. Just keep it to yourself. Yeah. yeah. Mm. The Mafia 716 said, Mary, crisis party bet to put cornrows in your hair. It's always the hair. It's always the hair stuff. They, it's, um, what, what is up with that? If I did cornrows, I actually have a friend who uh, is white like me and put cornrows in her hair and she, it made all of her hair fall out. So oh, not no going to go. go there. Not going to do it. Sorry. <laughs> Mary, leave your hair alone. Come up with something that is reversible. How about that? What about temporary hair dye? Uh, I mean, it's only so temporary. Yeah. Minor Zircon said, no law exists says they have to read your rights. Is that true? Is that like they don't, they do not have to read you your Miranda rights? I don't know. Okay. So that would be, that would be good to know as far as procedure goes. Drifter233 said, TBH, even if this was fully on the taxpayer, still a better use of tax money than war machine dollars. At least I get a good laugh out of it. Oh. Fair enough. Like if we're just playing the comparison game, then yeah, Mr. Beast getting fake arrested is still better. I guess it's not the worst thing that the government's ever done. Then, um, then I guess, oh, that or like, have you ever seen those, uh, the, some of my favorite memes, it's like like a group of undercover FBI agents raided the house of a group of undercover local yes. cops. Yes. Uh, and then it's just, it's cuts to Ice Cube and it's just like the taxpayers is like, <laughs> what the mm -hmm. fuck? Like it's like that's what we're doing with our time now. Like that's that's everything. We're just like that has happened. The crime has uh, has been stopped. So apparently they just need to commit fake crime. 
James Orenthal Wen said, in honor of my British ancestors, Mizzy is rubbish. Ah, <laughs> uh, Mizzy. Like, what if, here's the thing. What if Mizzy pivots and becomes like an altruist? Like he turns into the next Mr. Beast where he walks into people's houses, but he walks into their houses to tell them that he's buying them a bigger house. I don't uh, think he has the funds for it. <laughs> Someday. Mr. Beast? No, Miz oh, Mizzy. Mizzy. Oh, Mizzy. Right. <laughs> Stefan Buttle said, Lotus Eaters podcast did a segment on this guy. Great watch. Love all of you. Keep up the Lord's work. Thank you. Uh, also, guys, we are at s over 700 viewers and only 298 likes. I'm going to need you to please hit that like button. Step please, it up, guys. Please. Hit the like Would button. You please. And then one more and then we will move on. If you see something, like something. If you, if you see something, <laughs> like something. Perturbed Alpaca said, in the UK, they have the right to roam. Not sure how it works. <laughs> There we Sorry, go. Sorry, I'll wait until the song's over. We love Ian. We watched the Drugtopia bit yesterday. It's amazing. Have you seen Drugtopia? Party. Party. Have you seen Drugtopia? Drugtopia? Ian did a parody trailer uh, with Blaze, with the Blaze of uh, Euphoria, and it was the oh, best thing. It's called no. Drugtopia. It's incredible. I have you not heard that, no, that. Or seen it. Um, Perturbed Alpaca said, in the UK, they have the right to roam. Not sure how it works with government, but I can walk your private lands, but not your house. Now he can't do either. Oh, so, so he's allowed to just come on your lawn and just be a dick? That's that's not He'll fair. He'll find the loophole, you yeah, know. Yeah, he will. He, he's going to do that. <laughs> All right. Let us move on, ladies and gentlemen. So if you remember, not that long ago, we were talking about an absolute dumpster fire called The Rings of Power from Amazon. Well, they got a lot of backlash because they decided to update their casting for modern audiences, as they, as they call it, right? Uh, well, there was a lot of backlash that got kind of labeled and taken down when which all nuance is removed and they pretend as if like you, uh, you didn't have a reasonable take and say that you're just saying things because you're racist. Well, it says Rings of Power star Ishmael uh, Cruz Cordova says Amazon hired an on-set therapist to deal with racist backlash shocking that like against its inclusive and diverse casting yeah. he well, said you need support when this happens because the voices are so loud and they're coming at you from so many places technically they're not loud at all because they're not actually voices they're words on the internet so they're you're tweets. actually yes they're tweets <laughs> the tweets don't have voices unless i guess you have voice to text and it reads them to you he said yeah, uh, like the Siri. therapist's presence alone was beneficial quote i loved seeing her there even if we didn't speak <laughs> he's like I I'm know not, <laughs> he's like look i'm not a pussy but uh, <laughs> I knew there was someone there seeing me completely. It wasn't just an actor. You sound so gay. Wait, wait. <laughs> I need to be seen, heard, and validated. Wait, seen like why would the therapist be able to see you any more completely than an actor you don't know very well? Like why does a therapist you don't Isn't know very well? Isn't acting all about being seen anyway? Yeah, like why would an act? Why why would a therapist you don't know? be able to know you or see you any better than an actor you don't know. Just channel the pain from being cyberbullied into your acting. Yes. Like, they didn't do that. He's like, I was the worst Aaron Deer and everyone was mean to me. He actually <laughs> did like not the worst No, job. he wasn't. He wasn't the worst by far. Like, uh, I mean, I still hated Galadriel more than anybody <laughs> in that in that show. Galadriel could, like if anybody could kick rocks and not show up in season two, it would have been Galadriel. But I thought he did fine. And you know, he, he got the love interest with the, the lady who I liked. Who, by the way, I saw on something else recently, the, the lady who played, uh, I don't even remember the character's name now. The hot, hot, na na the actress's name's uh, Nazneen or Nazeen. I have no idea. Yeah. Bronwyn? Bronwyn, yeah. Why did I remember that? Bro Bronwyn, who was is Bronwyn the Horrible, as in horrible at giving speeches that actually inspire people, because it was a bunch of, like, this speech where she gives from, like, a balcony, and she just sounds timid as a mouse, and, every, and all the poor actors who have to pretend like they've been inspired. She barely inspired. raised her voice. She's like, go forth. <laughs> and what, what and the Aaron Deere was basically her silent boy toy on the yes. side. Uh, so, look... So as I said earlier, as I said earlier, look, you, you have to get used to people saying mean things about you or having negative things to say about you, right? Like I make the choice here, like after the show, I go through some of the comments because I'm editing and I like a lot of times you refresh and you just go through a little bit of it, but I don't go delving deep into everything people have to say about us. One, cause it's unproductive. Two, it's not going to make me do my do job any better. Like unless it's something where somebody corrects the mistake like the lord like the little mermaid thing and you catch something like that but in general 
they always used to say like you you have to have a thick skin to work in publishing because people are going to critique your work it's like they've lost the ability to do that in any industry yeah. uh, whether it's publishing whether it's entertainment whether it's politics nobody has a thick skin anymore and you just have to learn how to deal with it like I don't like getting that stuff either, obviously in a much smaller scale, but you either just don't read it or you find a way around it. It's just the way of the world. And you certainly don't expect your, st like I, we're going downstairs after this. I'm like, Tim, I want a therapist and I want him to sit right up here in the <laughs> studio when we're doing this show, because in case somebody says something mean to me, which they inevitably will, I want to be able to, to give my feelings to them. These and people just be heard. kind of don't understand the psychology of trolls because yeah. if you let them know that they're bothering yeah. you, that they're having an impact, that's only going to egg them on further. But he openly admits it here. It says the therapist was brought on board when production resumed shooting after pausing during the pandemic. Cordova's character Aaron Deere was the first person of color to play an elf on screen in the Lord of the Rings universe. It hurt, he said, of the backlash. It had a psychological and mental health impact. That's something that I'm very, very open about so that people understand that what they do and say online really hurts people. It really has an impact on us. Look, I'm actually not disagreeing that it does hurt people and that it does have an impact. I'm saying that that hurt and that impact is your responsibility to deal with, not somebody else's. Right. I guess what I'm saying is it's unwise to admit yeah. that it hurt you yeah. <laughs> because then people are just going to double down. Yeah. Like that's what the troll wants. The troll wants the reaction more than anything. They don't get whether positive or negative. They, they like a lot of times you see those things like where like somebody says something really mean to you online and you respond politely and it's like their brain short circuits because they're not used to somebody actually mm -hmm. responding politely. A lot of times when, when people are trolling me or whatever, I'll just go ahead and I'll like re just retweet it. Yeah. And then, because there, you know, there's like 125,000 people that follow me. So there's enough people that, that'll keep them busy yeah. because that's really all they want. They want interaction. When I, they want attention. So someone out of the, on my follower list will be like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll give you shit or whatever. So eh, you know, what, it's easy. I, what I used to do when like it was less common in skating, but when somebody would say something just randomly snotty, I would just pin that comment to on the Instagram and make that the top comment so that everybody <laughs> could read it. Like just don't let them know that it, it shouldn't bother you. I, I, I play music. So that's, there's no way I could pin every bad comment. Yeah. It'd be changing all the time. I, you know, that song sucks. This sucks. Blah, 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 blah. My favorite thing is to like, there's uh, the communities that you like, the, the one, the firearms community, there's nothing funnier than watching people argue about guns online, than watching people argue about pets online. Like all of these communities where everybody think, just knows they're right and everybody else is wrong. And you just get the popcorn and watch people argue for hours at a time. Sometimes hate comments are written like shockingly in a very creative way which you know, i appreciate good one but like it's it's essential to show that you're able to have a sense of humor about yourself and that you're able to take a joke about yourself and that's something that it seems like actors are incapable of doing these days and it's a, an essential part of showmanship which is something that you've like harped on so many times it is important uh, this he said that uh there were other things than just the cyberbullying, which i understand he said his phone got hacked his bank account got uh, had Whoa. attempts of being hacked. His PayPal got hacked. That's crazy, his friends got messages. Like, he got just death threats. He got things mailed to him. I'm picturing people found dude, his address. Some dude dressed as Gandalf, just like hacking <laughs> away. Look, I watched. Um, but this is what happens when you attack the fans. Yep. Uh, I mean, yeah. When what you, do you when expect? you when you blanket ooh. you attacked them first. It's only a pushback. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The other oh, by the way, Phil, when I was yeah. watching Enemy of the State, the other great thing about it is they give uh, they give him the, the the tech dude the the yellow sunglasses, which was like code for hacker in the mm -hmm. '90s. Like you were a hacker if you had black glasses with with yellow tinted. Also, mm -hmm. if you have a hoodie and you put put yeah. the hood up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With the with the with the yellow glasses, right? It's like I'm about to I'm about to hack Friendster because <laughs> yep. it's the '90s. <laughs> Um, and so I'm picturing I'm picturing somebody dressed as Gandalf hacking into a bank trying to get the Cordova's uh, banking information so that they can can be mean to him online further. It's just perfect. Uh, it is what it is, man. You have to learn how to to deal with it, and it's it is kind of a like for us. Like somebody pointed out yesterday, they're like, look, like. I'm sick of these people because we complain sometimes on the show about like, like I complain sometimes like I, I'm not making the point I want to make. And mine's more about critiquing my own performance. And they're like, I don't like you guys complaining about such having such an easy job. And like easy, maybe, maybe not. But it is uh, silly to not be able to draw the comparison. Like, look, I have it very good. Like as much as I work, as hard as I work, there are people who do backbreaking labor each and every day of their lives. And sure. it's, it's so, you know, you have to be aware 
of the blessings that you have in your life and what you've been given, lest you, you know, be lose the ability to mm -hmm. gain perspective Absolutely. for yourself. Absolutely. So if the price you pay to have a job that is hard work, but rewarding and also very, very cool is that people say mean things to you about you on the internet, then I guess the same should be said for the actor. Look, if you want to make good money and work uh, for a company that just spent $300 million on a show that no one's watching like Citadel, uh, and you want to ruin Lord of the Rings and you want to make a ton of money doing it, then I guess the price you're going to have to pay to do that is be able to take some pushback online. Um, remember when I said that that trans actor wasn't originally cast in Barbie, but then sent that letter pressuring them essentially yeah. to, to cast yep. him slash her for the role? Um, this similar thing happened with Cordova. He said that he wasn't originally cast and he went back and convinced the producers to reconsider. Like, I love the idea that they just have a, they were like, mm, we were considering you, you're a great actor, but you just didn't pass the ba the paper bag test because elves are supposed to be Aryan white people and you're black, so we don't like you for your skin color. Like, that's not <laughs> actually realistic to what happened. If anything, they were looking for diversity casting. Yeah. He said, uh, I grew up with all that rejection all around me. That's something that's driven me. The elves have been historically portrayed as white and Aryan, and I wanted to be an elf. And <laughs> he like gave all of these uh, reasons why he was fit for the role, but I they mean, chose him because diversity points. I mean, that's like the, the point of Halloween, right? You're allowed to be whoever you want on Halloween. That doesn't mean that's what you do for a fair and accurate representation of a character. Yeah. Um, if I, you know, I... It would be, and I hate to make this very, very bland and basic comparison, but Mary, it would be like you growing up, you're like, I really want to play Black Panther. I think T'Challa is just the greatest <laughs> character ever. I identify more with T'Challa than any other superhero. I think that I should be able to play T'Challa in the next Marvel movie. And you go there and you, you try out there like, look, Mary, we did the, it's not a paper bag. I don't know what test that would be. We did that test. You didn't pass. And you were like, look. It's like I a think I, out test. I, yeah, <laughs> I think I should be able to play this character. You're like, well, you've convinced us. We we are now going to cast you. It's in all this about role. Mary and who's right for the exactly. Role. And Mary is the Mary is the ideal king of Wakanda. Mm -hmm. That that you are. So they're also hinting that this actor is going to get a Marvel role, which is just like anybody can get a Marvel role these days. At this they choose nobodies. At this point, uh, I mean, it's like they're choosing people from TikTok. Yeah. It's uh, like, that's one of those things where it's like, now if you're a big enough actor, why would you want to? Yeah. Like, like diversity. Like Angelina like, Jolie. Why? Why, why? why? Like, I liked it because she was the only good part of that movie. But like, in general, they're like, we're, we might finally get to see Leonardo DiCaprio. I'm like, no, first of all, no, you're lying. That's, a, that's, that, would never. that's Cap. Like, second of all, like, why would he ever do that? That make like his career doesn't need it. Mm -hmm. Like like there was a, for a long time there was a lot of people saying that like Tom Cruise was going to be like an uh, an alternate um, Iron Man like in in flashbacks or something like they were gonna do like an alternate timeline Iron Man and Tom Cruise was like why would he do that like why would he do no. that it doesn't make any sense I don't even know why Kevin caught or why uh, yeah like it cheapens you yeah and, for, and for actors of that caliber for yeah. younger actors it makes perfect sense because it puts them on the main stage I just saw that uh, Jonathan Majors was out to dinner with his new girlfriend he's dating Megan good oh, now okay. took it he took he went they went to Red Lobster and he brought flowers for his his girlfriend <laughs> his girlfriend's mom and his girlfriend's sister so you know suave points to him okay. he brought bouquets of flowers true for all, gentleman true gentleman you know he, he really beat those abuse allegations <laughs> he beat them guys they they did go to, to red lobster hey that's 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 the every man in him he's like okay. he's like i may be a rich celebrity but i'm, right. I'm not I'm, I'm not a heathen i like right. i'll eat anywhere like it's it's good it's uh, it's good i have no problem with that if, if somebody red wants lobster to go to biscuits slap yeah they are good. That's probably what he said. He, <laughs> he likes things that slap. So he, he went and got Red Lobster Biscuits. That's, that's what he did. Ah, oh, that's, um, <clears throat> um, that's a problem. Look, Phil, is this the type of thing that you had to learn early on to deal with the criticism? Oh, I mean, yeah, I've, I've gotten a lot. I've definitely gotten more than my fair share of criticism yeah. because in the, in the music industry, like, since the, the aughts, there was people on the left that kind of were sniffing around and being and starting to starting to do the pushing but and stuff like that. Just... So I would be catching I would catch crap because they would be critical of, of you know, 
a song, music or a record or, or whatever. And then on top of it, there was the extra incentive. So I, I was, I've been taking criticism for as long as I've been in a band because that's what happens when you create things and put it out. People that don't like it want to let you know that they don't like it. And that's and that's something you have to learn to deal with early, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, like, look, if you're going to create anything, even something like this where you're, a lot of what we're doing is discussion and critique, you're still actively putting yourself out there every day and you have to accept that people are going to have their opinions mm -hmm. on what it is you say and do. It's, mm -hmm. it's actually why we were talking about when you were talking about being on whatever, it's like, look, when you're on something for four hours, like if all you can come up with is like a, is a critique is a time where I didn't say something that's insane. I guess I did pretty well then. Right. Yeah. Like it's actually flattering yeah. that it, as much controversy would be like yeah. drummed up about me, the one who didn't say something rather than the person who did. Uh, and, and I'm over here like, look, I say stupid stuff all the time. I stutter and um and ah uh and, and like my way all the way to stupidity on a regular basis. You just have to accept that people are going to have negative things to say about that. And you move mm -hmm. on with your day. Uh, another good way to get over it for these guys would also be get off your phone as much as possible. Yeah. Just stay all like, How don't about be... instead of hiring a therapist on set, you just confiscate all of the actors phones. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's what uh, it really helps them get in character. Chris Gore said he would do that. Like if he if he directed a feature film, he's like, first thing I do is like I go to every actor. Like I need the passwords to all your social medias because <laughs> you're just just no. Because <laughs> actors, these get just, full you, veto power. Sorry, you you just cannot be trusted to not screw this up as a lot of actors can yeah. these days. So. All right. Uh, and that the other thing I would say about that is like not just about politics, Phil, but about about the art. It's not just about oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. about your beliefs. It's also about the art because people want to critique the art. Yeah. I, so yeah. for me, there was definitely, you know, for all that remains, there was definitely people that were critical of, of all that remains just because we were, I mean, we, when we kind of broke onto the scene, it was kind of about the tail end of kind of the metalcore thing. Mm -hmm. 2006 is when the fall of ideals came out. And that was kind of when, Metalcore had almost jumped the shark. Like, if if it wasn't for the fact that to, that uh, the Fall of Ideals was, you know, a a really really good record, yeah. it would have been really totally panned. The the only there was only one bad review for the record, but the review was of the genre, not of the record. It was yeah. very much like, oh, yeah. Metalcore is over, blah blah blah, and it wasn't. They didn't review the music. Um, that doesn't seem fair either. No, but and but you know that that does happen, especially when you're when you are on you know, when you are riding a trend, like that was part of why, like after the fall of ideals, we released songs where I was doing singing the whole way through. Cause we were focusing on songs and not focusing on trying to follow the trend. Cause we could see the trend was, you know, on its way out. So there was a lot of people that were critical of, of, of stuff that we put out because of that. Um, but the stuff about the politics and stuff, that was just because that was like the icing on the cake. That was extra reason for them to give me crap. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe just for like, for the, oh, we got a $20 one right there. Unusable Alpaca said, the cops don't have to read your rights to you. There was a court case about this. And I think the ruling was that you're presumed to know your rights. They will not throw out the case just because your rights are not read to you. Well, that's a whole host of Hollywood tropes just gone out the window. No. You know? Mm. All right. People don't know their rights, though. That's, that, I mean, <laughs> they almost they, certainly don't. There's no. a reason they got rid of civics from high schools. and <laughs> You know. <laughs> they want people dumb and dependent. They do. Yep. All right. We got some super chats there, Mary. Johnny Beck sent us a thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you. Shane H. Wilder said, only find 365 pounds. That's only 450 years. US dollars. There are traffic fines for worth more. I'm glad my family was kicked out of England in the 1600s. <laughs> we can all be glad for that if we have English ancestry. Perturbed Alpaca said, uh, scream for us, daddy -o. He wants you Phil, to scream. Phil, that's you. Yes! Or what did you want, like a, like a, yes! Kind of thing. Somebody clip all that for me and, and send it to me so I can incorporate them I for later. I literally am here all the time. We can go into Carter's <laughs> room and I'll screen studio. for 15 minutes in there and give you every scream you want. I, I, I do want one that says, like, I need a scream that's like, thanks for the crisis party. <laughs> like, I, we're going to need Are something. Are going to do it? Well, Not right now. No, okay, no, we'll, no. we'll have to <laughs> plan it out, like something for the for like to make a specific crisis party. So yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. we need a specific one for episode four hundred too. Okay, yeah. we'll have to because three hundred. I had the one based on the movie three hundred, that was uh, from you know. Yeah. Tonight we dine in hell. <laughs> Again, though. Tonight. Suggestions for episode four hundred. Yep. I'm. I want to hear some. Chad O. Jackson said, dressing with class is not exclusive to whiteness. Crazy that many academics insist that dressing ghetto is a relic of being black. Urban dress didn't really start till the 60s. 
Uh, and right, like for a lot of people, like look, I grew up wearing enormous sweatpants because that was the culture in skating at that time, right? So it's like, am I like does what does that say about me? It doesn't say anything about me. I was from I was white and from the suburbs. Like that at the time when Eminem was very big, maybe that's why culture was so. Uh, united back then the, What's the joke It's like Because the best golfer Was black And the best rapper Was white We were truly united As a culture <laughs> Like Because we had Tiger Woods yep, and, and, and Eminem And Eminem Both at the same time Cultural moment in- And before Like There are people That will say That before Eminem Arguably It was a bunch of Jew- the, the three Jewish kids The Beastie Boys Beastie Were the greatest uh, yep. Rappers and uh, the people pointed it out they're like because it was like it was like Stone Cold Steve Austin at The Rock showed up at the WWE at the same time. And those are two names that still to this day are cult like were culturally relevant for a very very long time. So mm-hmm. very rarely do things that make that big of an impact all show up at the same time. That's true. Deuce Boogaloo said, "Okay, if cosplay doesn't deter you, I'll up the ante. Twelve crisis parties, and Mary has to watch and review the first five episodes of Attack on Titan." Thoughts? Why Attack on Titan? Okay. 12, that's reasonable. Fine. I actually haven't finished Harry Potter. I need to get on that. Yep. Um, the books? The, the movies. They really? wanted me to watch all the movies. But nobody's been checking up on me. I need, co- I need accountability. We need accountability culture on the show. Well, Wanda, <laughs> well, speaking of accountability culture, yeah. let's move on. Let's talk about Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes believes in, a, in accountability culture. <laughs> this, would, uh, this would make my mom very sad because my mom loves, want, loved Wanda Sykes. She did. So it says, Wanda Sykes isn't upset about cancel culture. She says, now there's just consequences. She also says that uh, it's really just, it's a bunch of old white men who are sad that they don't get to just say whatever they want anymore without any, uh, without any consequences, Mary. Yeah. Uh, it's really strange that uh, Wanda Sykes is billing her new comedy special as Wanda Sykes is uncancelable. People always say this when you're, it's like you're uncancelable, not because you're so resilient to backlash, but because you have zero subversive opinions or jokes to offer. <laughs> yep. We're and that's why you're not going to get canceled. Good job. <laughs> I'm uncancelable because I don't have anything objectionable to say. Because I'm incredibly inoffensive. I mean, but that's because it's from this people with the same delusion. You say, like, I'm part of the resistance as I parrot <laughs> yeah. every single God. belief that's pushed by every mainstream network and corporation in the country. It's so like, tiresome. Not, but I mean, but that's me. That's the same people who always talk about like as if we're still living in a highly Christian, highly Catholic mm-hmm. country, right? Where they they pretend like this is that's what this still is. Like like everyone's got a picture of the Pope hanging in their room. Like being as vulgar as possible isn't the status quo now. Yeah, in the entertainment industry. So well, here's it is. here's Until what she you said. Come back and then complain about it 15 years later. She said to me the whole complaint about c- cancel culture is a lot of men, especially straight men, who are just pissed that they can't say things anymore. You uh, know, big one right there, Mary from <laughs> D- Disco Jensen. Oh, he Thank said you. Attack on Titan review. Let's go. Uh, that's uh, all right. Well, we're not at 12 yet, but so. uh, we're getting there. Thank but, you, though. Uh, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> who are just pissed that they can't say anything, say things anymore. You know, well, yeah. how dare they be pissed that they can't speak? And it's not like you can't say these things. You can say them, but now there's just consequences. So that's why I say I can't get canceled. Only God can say, all right, Wanda, that's enough. Oh, I'm a member of the protected class yeah. and anything I say, no one's going to put any, no one's going to actually give me any grief for, oh. but I'm not cancelable. You have nothing offensive to say and you're a member of the protected class. You are not in any way subversive. You are rich. Shut your mouth. Maybe. Shut up. The what it is is like the old school liberals, the old school Hollywood liberals that were pushing back against the remnants of the Christian conservative movement that was pushing back and telling you to not read Harry Potter because it's it's witchcraft and stuff like that. That did exist for a period of time. What they don't realize is that they are now the status quo. They are now every bit the stuffy, uh, you know, the, the stuffy person that they were protesting against in the in the nineties and the early two thousands. But the change happened happened and they just didn't realize it Mm -hmm. she just it sounds like this special she's doing is incredibly vulgar which is what a lot of female stand-up comedians rely on for laughs at this point is shock value it says about halfway through her new netflix special wanda sykes squats down and mimes pulling a tampon out from between her legs to the delight of her sold out live audience she swings the imaginary sanitary product around her head like a lasso 
It's not just an anarchic attempt to sum up the kind of bad behavior that goes on in public toilets. It's also a takedown of transphobic moral panic. After all, these spaces that people are freaking out about admitting trans women into, they're not exactly the most pleasant places in the world. Quote, I welcome my trans sisters into the ladies room, she shrugs to the crowd. Maybe you'll make us do better, you know? Yeah, women are so disgusting for having a period. Oh, there we go. Let's go! We got one from Beanbag Action. He said, Hold. Hold, please. He said, What's up, crisis actors? It's me, your boy. The ATF family decided to stop holding my hush pickle hostage after 294 days. To heck with the ATF and the NFA. That is all. Is that the is that the average amount of time that they'll hold on to that before giving it to you? I just got one um, last time I was. I just picked one up last time I was home. I put the paperwork in on October third. Yeah. And I got it back in April. Wow. So yeah. six months. Yeah. So. Yep. Mm -hmm. Arbitrary, <laughs> arbitrary bureaucratic bullshit. A hundred percent. Yep. This just sounds like she's calling biological women disgusting for having periods. It doesn't sound like it's well, accepting she, at she's, all. She's getting ready for that new that movement of neo women who don't have to do something as disgusting as bleed from they're, their vaginas. Yeah, they're nice and clean. They don't have uterus, so maybe maybe biological women are so disgusting with their periods they should be just sanctioned off into their own private restrooms for only biological women. Yep. But yeah, crazy. So gross. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we should cordon them off from the rest of polite society, yeah. Mary. I don't, I don't get why people find periods so gross, but I also don't get why there are some women that think that it's acceptable to just bleed. Wait, what? I don't get why some people find periods so disgusting, but I also don't get why there are some women that think it's acceptable to just oh, free the free bleed. bleeding. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Well, that that on. didn't last very long. That was very 2014. Um, her new special has material on how medical sexism has let down menopausal women, question mark, and why black people can't be weird for fear of being murdered in the street. Can we just have a podcast called Big Sigh? <laughs> Ooh, actually, that's not a bad name. <laughs> Big Sigh. That, a lot of times when Mary's sending me the worst of the worst articles, sometimes all I can respond is just typing out sigh. I, I, I actually do that. I'm just like, sigh. I really do think Big Sigh is a great name for it a is. podcast. It is. <laughs> Big uh, Sigh. Look, dude, it's just the, at a certain point, you have to accept that you're part of the establishment now, that all your humor, your beliefs, everything that you hold dear, that was once a subversive take. Look, she should be canceled just for being in Velma, as far as I'm concerned. If she, she, she should be canceled for anything. It's for pay, playing the utterly stereotypical lesbian cop in Velma, who constantly violates people's civil liberties while being stupid and annoying on the show. That's they, a real they also talked in this article about how Wanda Sykes is very brave for being the first person to cancel and call out Roseanne Barr for her problematic tweet where she called an Obama advisor a uh, character from the Planet of the Apes. Yep. She said uh, that, here it is, in 2018, uh, she was the first to publicly dissociate herself from the then-hit Roseanne reboot Quote, honestly, I never like fell out with her. I just made a statement that I could no longer be on that show because of the comment. Reminded me of when um, Patton Oswalt was like, me in a picture with my good friend Dave Chappelle. And people on the internet were like, that's not a good idea. You should not take a picture with that bigot. He's a transphobic bigot. And he's like, okay, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. It's a problem. I'm sorry. I don't, I'm not transphobic. I'm not transphobic. I promise. They also made sure to mention Dave Chappelle here. They said, uh, uh, while the likes of Dave Chappelle and Ricky Gervais generated controversy by ridiculing trans people, uh, Wanda Sykes, I'm an entertainer, takes a markedly different tr tack. We have a big one right there from DD Mega Doo Doo 97. He said, uh, do worry guys, we'll get married to go through her Mikasa era. Also big psyop. Big, <laughs> big psyop, psyop is amazing. <laughs> That's Holy nice. crap. Mm -hmm. Somebody needs to do that. Quality. Quality time. I don't know. Are we going to get to 12? I don't think we're getting to 12 know, today, guys. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 
We, that could be a standing one. If people want to try another day and get to 12 so that Mary has to watch and review the first five episodes of Attack on Titan, then so be it. She said, I want the community to know that I'm with them. Yep. I think it's important to let people know where you stand, especially with all the comments everyone else has been making. Well, aren't you so brave? Yes. I hope they don't cancel you. You're so stunning. You're so brave. You're it's... not afraid of getting canceled for supporting the trans community. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Incredible. I, I, but it, you know what it is? It's like there was a time when when they spoke up, it was brave. What they just don't realize is that it's just not brave anymore. Yeah. But they want the same level of adulation. It's that because came from. of the topics, though. Yeah. It's not that they, they're not saying anything that is not 100% Common. Thank you. There we go. Let's go. Let's go. I mean, even Dave Chappelle, he's he's totally kosher and above board. Yeah. He is. Yeah, but he's more eloquent and smart. He barely crossed a line. Yeah. He's still a very acceptable liberal. Yep. He was on SNL. Like, come on. He's also more intelligent than Wanda Sykes in his delivery and his his work is his last yeah. Saturday Night Live bit was perfect example of why he's so much better. Brilliant. He's so much better than everyone else working today. Like yep. he actually he like all the other comedians, the, the likes of a Wanda Sykes should just be embarrassed that he's as good as he is, and she's just not very good. Mm -hmm. like, I mean, if he is the best comedian out there right now, then it's only because there's not competition. Anymore. And there's there's still comedy out there these days, like. Uh, but it's just you have to like a lot of people like that's the thing. You go you go to comedy clubs, you're into that scene, and the, the place where I see most of my comedy is like people put up their you know their routines on Instagram yeah. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So I see clips of stuff like that, and I like I enjoy the comedians that at least try to get away from political humor. Like I was telling you the one yesterday about the guy who was talking about CrossFit. Where it's like I, I joined an emotional support group for guys who peaked in high school. It's called CrossFit. <laughs> and it's just like I can appreciate the – like because it always feels like when comedians like that do it, right? Then they, they do those bits and they get laughter. But then they get into anything political and it gets so much more of a reaction. So I can appreciate the ones who say like, look, I'm going to keep trying to find the bit that's not inherently political yeah. that gets the same. Trevor Wallace, I don't listen to his stand-up, but I can watch Trevor Wallace's skits on Instagram all day long because it's glorious. Notoriously not political, mm -hmm. right? The 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 political jokes get get uh, clapter. Yeah, where it's from it's both like sides. Applause more than anything because they agree more than add the the comedian said anything funny or clever. It's just oh, he he said the right thing, so we're gonna cheer for him, and that's. That's just a sad, sad, sad situation if you are there to make people laugh and all you're doing is saying things that they agree with so that way they clap like seals. Bill Bill Burr. Which is exactly what every yeah. nighttime mm -hmm. uh, talk, TV show talk show does. They're all, it's all clapter. It's, none of it's like actually laughing. They're not funny. Bill so. Burr was a genius at being able to address racial issues, issues between the sexes in a way that was extremely intelligent and story driven a lot of the time. But the problem was, is that was like 10 years ago now, 15 mm -hmm. years ago now, we're in a very different sociopolitical landscape that we were back then. So it's just, it is mm -hmm. what it is. Uh, and it's not new for people to want to get a sense of affirmation from comedy. No. Yeah. Like, but now I think you're looking for affirmation by feeling comfortable and comedians used to give you this feeling of affirmation from making you uncomfortable and you feel like, oh, I wasn't the only person that thought that was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And it's like catching you off guard that, that makes you feel accepted by the people around you because they also find the same thing funny. Yeah, because everyone's laughing. You're like, oh, it's okay yeah. to think that because everyone gets yeah. the joke. I yeah. wanted to point out, by the way, that this uh, take from Wanda Sykes is just recycled from cat williams in 2021 <laughs> he said the literal same thing about cancel culture he said uh that canceling is merely a result of marginalized groups finally having a voice via social media to say that they're tired of being punchlines. he said at the end of the day there is no cancel culture uh <laughs> he said i don't know what people what people we think got canceled uh wish we got back i don't need to know who are they it's done for the reasons it's done for, and it helped. All that's going to happen is that we're going to have to be more sensitive in the way that we talk. Isn't that what we want anyway? Can you hear the ladder being pulled up behind him? I can hear the ladder being pulled up behind him right now. It's, yeah, it's, it's bouncing against whatever he's, he's done. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the story 
about like the construction worker or the, he was like a cable TV installer who was like, had his arm out the window while he was driving and somebody called his job because it looked like he was making the okay hand gesture. No. <laughs> Does anybody remember that? No, in in I know. the chat. Does anybody remember what I'm talking about here? I remember that a long time ago. So this was at the peak of the Reddit, you know, the, the hysteria that was going on around the okay, yeah. how, how it's a sign of white supremacy and some not white, cable installer or something was driving and somebody saw it out the window and like got the number on the back of the work truck and called his job and got him in trouble uh yeah. bonk like but that's i'm willing to say cancel culture was never a thing for a lot of celebrities because they're anti-fragile and yeah well, but look real at... cancel culture was weaponized against ordinary people yeah who were attacked on social media by a bunch of strangers yeah uh, the celebrity, whether we're talking about the, um, what's his name? The Louis, Louis CK. He comes back, he makes more money yeah. now than he did before. Roseanne's doing fine now. Um, all of these celebrities, like you said, anti-fragile. They just keep working. They just kind of have a bit of a come to Jesus moment, if you will. Right. Where they realize that you can't rely on the system forever and that you're going to have to take the work into your own hands and do it on your own. And that's just, that's just part of it, right? Mm-hmm. So um, yep. <laughs> here's a, a, another part of Cat Williams statement. He said, your job as a comedian is to please the most amount of people with your art. I don't know if please is the right yeah. word, but he said, if you want to offend somebody, nobody took those words away from you. Dirty <laughs> be <laughs> ain't been taken away. You can say that, but don't call somebody this word when you know this affects all of these people. Don't use the R word when you really mean people on the spectrum. Don't say this word instead of saying autistic. Don't say this word instead of saying little people. And if you ask all the people that didn't make it to the NBA, if you ask them if we just lowered the goal down another foot, they'd all tell you they'd make it. Nobody likes the out of bounds, but out of bounds has to be there or you'll run up in the stands, right? I remember when uh, like Nicole Arbor had a bit where she said like uh, obesity is the number one killer of people in America, but nobody's going on a march against that or is going on is going on a march against yeah. that, which would ironically make people less obese. Was it called uh, like dear fat people yeah, or something? Yeah, like, mm -hmm. oh, also, by the way, guys, I was right. Uh, California man fired over alleged white power sign says he was cracking his knuckles. Uh, he doesn't look like a white supremacist to me, but, uh, you know, what do I know? <laughs> Actually, uh, you know, if you go to any white supremacist meeting in this country, you're going to find a lot of half Asian guys, a lot of Latinos. It's off white supremacy. This, it's off white supremacy That's now. Totally. Hope supremacy. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't hear the news. <laughs> we just, we live in a very stupid time. We, and do. We, we live in a very unserious time in a very unserious population. We, I suppose, in many ways contribute to the unseriousness of it all. That's okay. Uh, but like I said, when I, re when I posted that Tucker thing uh, today in the Slack, I was like, look, we're done. Like society's screwed between AI, between deep fakes, and the the very the, the basic unserious nature of the culture. We're screwed. But at least it's gonna be funny. Mm -hmm. At least it's gonna be funny to watch it all come tumbling down in a in a nihilistic sense. Hopefully. So. Uh, all right, guys. So uh, Wanda Sykes, she's back in the news for eight seconds after Velma, and that's that's a re <laughs> that's what she should really be upset about. That's what she should really be apologizing for. If cancel culture was to come for Wanda Sykes for anything, it should be being a part of Velma because the show is so, so bad. True. All right, guys, we got a bunch of super chats here. So Mary, let's get right into it. I don't know if we're gonna get to twelve today. I I don't know. We'll see. Know. The last of my kind said, "Howdy, dude, do that." And my man Phil, pet pics coming soon for cute of the day. I'm sure y'all will enjoy my adorable lazy bums. Yee. Yeah, th they always give them the backhanded compliments. Uh, and guys, yes, if you want to submit, I do have space fill ready to fill up. If you've got cute and adorable pets, they can be featured right here on the show. Hashtag PCC Pets on Twitter. Uh, tag me in there as well because it gets to me sooner if you actually tag me in the post so thank you sketch therapy said women are only accountable when it's convenient and then he said women are only adults when it's convenient <laughs> well, uh, well i would just say act accordingly then you know like make assurances that you're not going to become the next target of um, like some kind of me too you know like have have ways that you operate so, based on these assumptions so people <laughs> used to mock mike pence because of the pence rule yes. which is you never go anywhere alone with another woman if you're a married or if you're a man in a relationship they would they would 
give him crap and mock him, blah, blah, blah. But Mike Pence ain't never got me too and he ain't never going to get me too. No. What's and I don't, and I, like, I follow the Pence rule myself. Like, I'm not, go, like, we don't have, like, if we have, we have, uh, people that are working on our crew and stuff i don't go anywhere with any of the crew alone like if it's a, if it's a woman or the, a girl i don't go alone with her someone else goes because i don't want to have any kind of issue i am never alone with a female on tour ever that might even apply if you're just not even in a relationship at this yeah, point 100 percent. and Absolutely. that's how it used to be chaperones existed for a reason so our last i'll give you a little story last tour last year that we did we did this this tour and our and our, uh, our merch girl our Merch person was a girl. She's super nice, super cool. Anytime anyone made any kind of even remotely sexual joke or whatever, which you're on tour, you're living in a bus, that's going to happen. Yeah. My first response is always, I don't have an HR department. I don't want nothing to do with this, yeah. right? Like it's straight up. I don't make those kind of jokes because I don't want to have to worry about it, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? Sketch Therapy said, if you need to talk the roast beef, stop. Uh, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, tw a big one from Disco Jensen right there. He said, keep a running tally and add Hannah Claire's... Uh, wait, what is it? It's like reneging. Reneg <laughs> to the count for not finishing the Fast Saga. Give anime a shot. Do we... Do we? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if we I've can... I've tried to watch other anime before. It's just boring to me. Mm. Like, I don't know. No hate to you if that's what you're into, I guess, but... It's not really my thing. If you if you get to twelve though, I will do it. What if Pence got done in by somebody who's like, look, I'm a guy, and he just he made an advance on me, and I don't know what to tell you. Like he's just Mike. Like it's not like there isn't a large um, uh, precedent sent in the past about like straight politicians, like like straight politicians who do stuff in private that they were not necessarily always going to talk about. So somebody could make that claim about him, and he'd never be able to prove him wrong. Hmm. Possible. Dirty politicians will do dirty things. Yeah. Nathan Koss said, at tw at 10 crisis parties, Mary has to be clown herself. Wig, makeup, and big red nose. I like that verb. It's one of my favorite. Kino Corner in the chat says, what up? Watch Cowboy Bebop. And then, no. I, but I don't think the no is to us. I think he's talking to somebody. Else <laughs> say, but could, hello, Kino, Kino Corner. Corner. Um, I don't know. Should I agree to this? For 10? 10. Full makeup? 10, 10 is not enough. Like 12 for five episodes of anime, but 10 for full makeup, hair, and... Yeah, that's that's 12, gonna be... Uh, 12 for both. No, no, I'm not gonna say 12. I'm gonna say 20 for that. Okay. For full makeup... Yeah. With, cause you that's on the internet to, forever, yeah. guys. It's more... It's it's not so much about be-clowning myself. It's about be-clowning myself, which is now, like, in the internet archive A decade forever. from now, you're arguing with someone on the internet, and then and it's they, just, yeah. boom, the meme comes up, where it's yeah. like, you've been be-clowned. Yeah. Yeah. Noah Sanders said, if we're talking about Mary's hair, Dutch or French braids would look great. And I've heard they don't have to Mirandize people due to how prevalent it is in popular media. Really? That's why they think people know their rights. Like, OK, what if they what if they pull over an Amish person and on their on the on the car, on the cart, uh, the horse and cart? And they're how just like, they know? how would they know? They don't watch TV. <laughs> like, what is what are they going to do? I'm guessing there aren't a lot of Amish people going to prison these days. <laughs> Because Reason said, can you develop a camera that can turn Mary into a ghost after a crisis party? That would be epic. Uh, I'll have to talk to, there's a camera company called Phantom, so I'll have to talk to Phantom. That seems to make the most sense. Okay. Bro Cody said, evil Mizzy walks into a house and does the dishes. Hey! He just starts <laughs> doing all of their chores. Yes! Like that's what that's what he can pivot to, right? He just he starts Sounds walking like up Sounds like slavery to, to me. He's like oh. uh, <laughs> he starts walking up to people. He's like, nice dog, and then he gives them a gift gift certificate for like uh, a dog grooming place. <laughs> Joe C said, "Phil, what's your take on content like Kentucky Ballistics?" Uh Kentucky Ballistics specifically, I'm happy that he survived the exploding 50 caliber BMG. Um but otherwise, I think it's cool, you know. I I'm not I don't actually uh watch a lot of his stuff, but I'm I enjoy firearms related content on YouTube. I'm a fan of Grand Thumb. I'm a fan of uh administrative results, the guys at T Rex Arms. Lucas is super cool. He was on the uh yeah. the podcast I watched, recently. I watched like it's so funny, I never go downstairs during because mm -hmm. I'm I'm usually working at the end of the day. So sure. I never go downstairs during the before green room unless like if I'm on the show, I guess. But like I went down there, I'm like, oh, 
I was just watching one of your videos, literally like out of all the people yeah. to recognize. It's like, I was just watching your video on dry fire exercises the other day. That's what a, what a small world. Lucas is great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I enjoy that kind of stuff. Uh, mo but mostly it's like uh, the AK guy, Garantham, Donut Operator, but he doesn't really do gun stuff. But, uh, but yeah, that, that kind of stuff's fun. So yeah, I enjoy it. Infernal Saxon said VTuber Mary at 100K subs. Um, I mean, I'm not opposed to it if it's just just one video. <laughs> ah, there you go. Yeah. But I don't know what the, the tech is involved there, but sure. The Last of My Kind said, how many parties to make y'all dress like Tim? Uh, I, I don't own any button-up shirts. Once the that's, beanies that's, come in, we can all just wear the I'll beanies. I'll do it. That's true. Uh, I, actually, yeah, I, how actually, many parties? Yeah. Um, you, you pick a number. I don't know. <laughs> We're not even going to remember all of this. Yes. Uh, I have what I need to, to dress up like Tim, though. Like, all you really need is, a, like, a baseball tee... Or the, and the beanie. or the, or you have the button up shirt, the Oxford. Yeah. Or the, yeah, the button up yeah. shirt. We'll, we'll like alternate. Yeah. How about that? Okay. The last of my kind, or sorry, no, B Mafia said, okay, better bet 10 parties and you must record yourself returning all the shopping carts for 30 minutes. 10. I don't know. The gas involved, you gotta go do it. Yeah. Uh, eh. I, I think 12 is fair for that one, 12 or 15. We're just coming know. up with numbers now. <laughs> Sketch Therapy said, onset therapist trolling client to justify income. They're like justifying the budget there. They spent like a billion dollars on the show and they're just figuring out how to spend it. Yeah. Sketch Therapy said, honoring bets matters to women when it's convenient. <laughs> so true. Uh, Shane H. Wilder said, this special sounds like a laugh riot. Yawns. Yawn. Rascal right. King said, the Rascal King has been impatiently waiting uh, for the ATF to release his forbidden popsicle since October. Absolutely unacceptable. It's been a while since I saw Rascal King in the chat. He, I think he had one the other day. Welcome back, Rascal King. I also saw Porco Rosso Forever in the chat earlier. I hadn't seen him in a while. Perturbed Alpaca said, experience, you are only, re you are only Mirandized when you're arrested. If you are only being detained, they will not read them. Don't talk to cops without a lawyer present. Very good advice. Yeah, I guess that's what was going through Mr. Beast's head when he stopped answering questions. <laughs> well, that and he's also like, if they if they arrest me, I'm like literally going to shut down probably half the economy here in, yeah. in this in this town, given that like all his employees live there. He's just going to and... become the unofficial corrupt mayor. <laughs> that's fantastic. That would be a great show somebody should make. Like the, just a show. Did you ever see the show Was it with Kelsey Grammer? It was called Boss, where he plays like no. a corrupt politician. We could do that, but it's Mr. Beast as a corrupt politician. I need to rewatch <laughs> Frasier. Yes, dude. Old Warrior 34 said, random question for Phil. What's your carry gun, assuming you concealed carry? 19. G19. Hmm. Clock. Appendix carry? Yes. Appendix carry? Mm -hmm. All right. I, I have, I'm appendix carry, and I cold. Like, no, no practice, no warming up. I have a sub 1.5 for nice. a draw. Nice. When I when I practice, I can get down to a sub one second. It is really funny. The more you the more you practice, the more you learn how unrealistic the other conceal and carry position. A lot of the other yeah. conceal and carry positions are. Yeah. Because I would you know like I would have loved to be able to do like you know mid not small the back but yeah. you know almost so three small the back. four o'clock yeah. something like that. They're they're really really good for if you're at home or if you're like yeah. so when I go if I'm going out in the woods around my house like in my place in New Hampshire if I'm at home or whatever uh, and I want to have a gun on me I'll carry it on my side yeah. right because I'm not going out but if I'm going into town yeah. or if I'm going somewhere else I want to have it uh, you know I want appendix and I want it to be concealed I don't want anyone to know that I have a gun um, and there's just the printing is too heavy in the back yeah. uh, especially hard. if you're going anywhere where you're actually so, moving around <laughs> What should girls do if they want to dress slutty, but they uh, also want to the thigh, of carry? Course. So there's the thigh. Um, personally, I think if you're carrying, you shouldn't be trying to <laughs> dress slutty. Well, no, okay, no. If you're if Mary, you're trying if you're trying to conceal, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. <laughs> yeah, if you're no, if you're trying to conceal, you shouldn't dress slutty because the thing about dressing slutty is you're showing a lot of skin. There's not a lot of clothes there, so it makes it really really hard to conceal. Get a get a skin colored gun, Mary. And have ah, blend into skin your, color gun. Yeah. I don't I actually don't. this is Mary. She's not gonna try and dress provocatively. 
yeah, I mean, by some people's standards, <laughs> by, by my old school's standards, I do, but. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> Lucius the Eternal said, Mary, have you seen Inbetweeners? Yes, I have, um, and I love that show. Wow, that's amazing. What is, why is that amazing? I mean, like, usually they ask that, and you're just like, no, I've, I, no. I've, no, I freaking love that show. No, there you go. It's really good. All right, and now the funny thing is, is now Phil, I've been um, because like I've I've got like a new idea out here. I've been considering like, what do I want to go through the process of owning out here? Because like I said, I left all my gun, everything at home in West Virginia. I'm I'm a Maryland resident. Yeah, so but are you going to move to West Virginia when no. we move? Uh, oh, okay. No. Like, uh, so if I stay here, it's just, it's just such a headache. It'll be a lot of work. It's man. so much work to, yeah. to do out here and everything. It's like there's only so much time on the weekends mm -hmm. to do all that stuff. And you got to go. And the thing is, your class you have to do during the week. I assume you have to go and probably present in person yeah. in Maryland. Yeah. Um, Maybe not. I'm not sure. But I know when I got my Massachusetts out of state one, mm. um, I had to go to Boston and go there with my stuff. And that means I drove from here all the way up to Massachusetts yeah. just so I can do the, the paperwork and stuff. But mm. it's, the, it's a pain in the butt, but that's what you got to do to be legal. So that's what you got to do. Yep. All right. Phil, my friend, thank you so much Cheers, for joining thank us you. today. Let everyone know where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on the internet. Uh, I am Phil That Remains on Twitter. I am Phil That Remains Official on Instagram. Uh, the band is All That Remains, available on Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, and Pandora, and all that stuff. All right. Guys, we're very close to a six crisis party. I don't know if somebody wants to do anything I mean, I don't know. That. Just, I'm just putting that out there. There, Guys, before <laughs> we go, hit the like button on this video. Subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Thank you very much for that. Mary, where can they find you? You can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on Twitter. That is also Mary Archived. I could really use some more hate on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, or lately, right? You're like, yeah. I, I would love some more. Like, or how about this? How, Keep maybe it like, coming. She's Keep just it like, coming. <laughs> she's like, I'd like some hate, some variety. Yeah, in my hate. Maybe some non-Destiny. Come hate. up with new material. There you go. Somebody clip that as well. Guys, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter uh, at Brett Dasovic on both of those platforms. This show is here Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. If you'd like to listen to the audio version of this podcast, we are on Amazon Music. Apple Podcast, Pandora, and Spotify. If you'd like to follow the show on social media, we are on Twitter at popculture underscore show, Facebook and TikTok at Pop Culture Crisis, and on Instagram at Pop Culture Crisis Pod. We will be back with a special guest tomorrow. We'll see you then, guys. Bye. Later. Bye now.